Yep. Your kitten Piper <laughs> in the middle of the night jumped through all of this mess. Uh-huh. And knocked out the power to the camera. I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I can't see anything. I, I you know, I heard a commotion last night. And sure enough, I'll get back oh, in. Oh no. That's funny. Okay, cool. So let's see who is on there. Now we're not so everybody who's on Twitch, we're just doing a quick little test before we actually start. We have we have about uh seven minutes to go. Um I'm gonna go ahead and put out the we had a bunch of people sign up for the for the event, so cool. I think there must have been you know in the air with the cats last night because one of mine was insane too and he likes the Velcro on my Apple Watch band. Yeah. And he kind of bite it while I'm while it's on me, but he's started chewing on it while it's on my nightstand. And that wakes me up because he's over there clattering in the cords and stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can't even count how many times I had to shove him off my end table last night and trying to sleep. I find he finally got me up around 6 30 this morning and I did not want to be up that early. I'm I'm definitely putting scrappy on a diet. <laughs> he jumped on my back last night, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's got to be scrappy, <laughs> dude! I love you, but you're too big now. Get off me!" Oh, funny. Yeah, I can tell which cat is crawling on me by how much they weigh, because one of them definitely outweighs the other, and they're both the same age. But one's food made motivated, and one's play motivated. <clears throat> I can tell which mm -hmm. one weighs more. Yeah, our oh, bloodhounds get our bloodhounds yeah. getting a little heavy, and our lab is. So fine. did everybody? So everybody got the Twitch link, right? So do me a favor. Hey, hey that's that's uh, that's Larue. Okay. Put it in the comments. Right. So do me a favor and send out to your Facebook and Twitter uh, that you guys are going to be live in about five minutes. And, and this is uh, we should send them to the Chrome Illusion Twitch. That's right. Send them to the Chrome okay. Illusion Twitch or the the uh, the Twitch dot Chrome Illusion. The quick the Twitch yeah. forward slash Chrome Illusion. Yeah. Twitch. So I'm just TV. going to my Facebook and. <clears throat> What's on your mind? Say, uh, hey, everyone. Right. There we go. Let me, uh, hey, friends. Uh, what's on your mind? I hate it when friends forget my birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> what? I sent you that really, really expensive card. Didn't you get it? <laughs> <laughs> your friggin' name, you know what? Your neighbor took it. All right, Photoshop. You know what? I should just do it this way. No, I should, I'll do it this way. Go on to now to group Photoshop. This is group. Okay. Oh, now it's working again. Before Twitch wasn't allowing me to hit the button, and send the mini groups, and now they are. Um, let me just change something real quick. It's now live. Let me copy Photoshop developing. Gotta put a little more. Okay. Post. Okay, Facebook posted to me to my. Yeah, I put the Go. title, of the presentation, in in the verbiage there. <clears throat> Plus, you're developing in record time. Cool. I do not want this. Let me. Oh, I did not want that. Let me go take this out. What is this? Let's go to Notepad here real fast. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. And people have a tendency to jump in late as after we after we get started as as well. So, sure, because it pings on their phone and says, "Hey, we're live." <clears throat> I, I might I might just like this Twitch thing. I might have to create a uh, special Skylum Twitch account now. Go go live. Compete with our coffee breaks. Angela's not smiling. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm trying to. I'm switching out my because I my Twitter is usually hooked up to Skylum, so I might have to switch accounts on everything to get to my accounts. Good All point. right. So so how oh. about if Kevin and Benelli go ahead and start sharing your screen so I have that available to, to put up here in the Okay, we'll do um share screen and, and I think screen. um oh Diana's here. Diana Vision. Hey Diana, welcome. 
Um, let me see. I'm gonna go over here to the Twitch box and see who's here. Um, and and through Cat's eyes, who's that's um, you're from? Oh, you're from um, I'm San Luis Obispo. Welcome. Hey, who, everybody. That is, what was that? <laughs> That's my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So, so we oh, need you to. Uh, so, mom, if you can hear me, we're, we're going to need at least one embarrassing question uh, during the session. At least yeah. one, maybe two, <laughs> three so if you're ambitious. <laughs> cool. Okay, so Buster sixty six, welcome. And uh, see, I see Vanelli's there, and through, uh, through Cat Sidesco, that's your mom. Now there's about almost 20 people on, but not everybody is, is, is interacting in the chat box. Do me a favor, everybody who's watching on Twitch here, would you would you kind of give a shout out as to where you're from? I'm I'm curious. We got a few more minutes left, and we'll 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 start the presentation officially. Um, let's see. Who's going to go first? I'll probably start us off here. Okay, so I see Kevin LaRue's screen right there. So I guess I'll go ahead and put your screen up there. There we go. Love the stream yards. It's great. All right. Uh, okay, so Diana Vision says she's from San Diego, of course. Buster X66 says she's from Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, and I see our, uh, our Lundbaum, number one, is from San Diego. I remember you. Welcome. Good to see you. Cynthia from Santee, California. Hey, Cynthia, Cynthiana. Welcome. Um, and we almost get, we have almost 20 people already. We'll, we, we'll be getting more. They'll be kind of logging in through our three-hour presentation. Um, let's see. Cynthia says, Jai. I guess she meant Hi. <laughs> I don't like John. <laughs> oh, and Faye Barsh is here. Faye Barsh is from the Saskatchewan. Um, wow. Cool. You know, I'm, I'm Cynthia. Lois. Lois is not here. Lois needs to be here. Um, and then <laughs> Diana Arnold. Hey, Diana Arnold. <clears throat> Good to see you from Encinitas. My old, 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 old hometown. Okay, we got, um, let's see, Bakuthio. Lakeside checking in. Um, Bakuthio is Andy from Lakeside. Yeah, Excellent. give a shout out to where you guys are from here. We got, we got over almost 25 people on here so far. I should get like 25 responses. <laughs> <laughs> we got some, an, we have an incredible lineup today. The Skylum team is here, teamed up with, uh, with Robert Vanelli. Vanelli from Photoshop World or Kelby One. <clears throat> oh, not Kelby Kelby. One. <laughs> Link, right. LinkedIn Learning guy. And LinkedIn Learning. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, more people are signing in. Cool. And then, in, in, in fact, um, Angela, if you do me a favor, like every 10 minutes or so, if you would send out a little uh, Facebook um, <laughs> thing saying that we are live on and, and, and you've got to come and join us or something like that. Uh, I, can do, I can do that, too, because uh, uh, once, uh, when, okay, once I turn the podium over to our two okay. visual artists, right, so I'll, I'll, be in, I'll be in the background heckling. I was thinking that Kev, I figured Kevin was the boss, so he probably you know has somebody else do it. So yeah. <laughs> the boss, <laughs> yeah, the head to you. <laughs> hey Kevin, your profile photo looks really good. It does, huh? I, I wonder who took that. <laughs> who took, oh, oh, that that Benelli took that one. That that's a very good photo, actually. We were Kevin. we were all in um, Seattle, right? Yeah, that was at the uh, that, that was in the yeah. uh, Bellevue office. We got the uh, DP skier Steve from San Diego, longtime member of SD Pug. Welcome, man. Great. Um, and Samarin uh, from Tierra Santa, San Diego. Um, Samarin. Old friend of oh, that. That's Dan Palermo. Hey, hi. Good. Good to see everybody. Um, this this digital stuff is working. 
Yeah, it's working. <laughs> it's working. We got. Uh, let's see. Let's see. That's a pen. It's eventual pen mosquitoes from um, Kevin. Uh, let's see. And of course, I'm from Oceanside, California. Here, I'll put that down here. Oceanside. Do you call it? Do you ever call it Oceanside, or the locals don't? Don't. I, 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 the locals don't. The locals don't even say Oceanside. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, I just. Whatever. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, hey! Just for the record, uh, yeah. I know it's Saturday, but like Vanelli, I decided to wear my my Skylum uh, polo shirt to let everybody know that we're official. Oh, that great! Was, I'm, I'm wearing my. Taking this seriously, for, folks. Uh, we're getting I'm one. My, I'm wearing my Pumos. I'm wearing, I'm wearing my Puma shirt. There you go. There you go. <laughs> right. Now, now, now we check the IP. Uh, intellectual property uh, stuff for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, gosh, let's see. Let me. Let's see. Oh, good. So we're on. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and Twitch is automatically recording. Um, good. good. We're eleven minutes in. It's about ten oh four. Let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling, everybody. Welcome. Our last meeting of the year, Photoshop Users Group, and um, we're about what? Uh, Faye, how many members do we have in our group so far? Is it about thirty five thousand? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, there's Willie Sakai. Welcome, man, from Poway. Uh, Willie, where's your where's your wonderful wife? Where, where's Lois? I didn't see her in here. Who's got to be here? Um, Mr. Phil Gov, Govavex, Phil from San Diego. I guess I guess go, go visual effects. Go visual effects. Go visual effects. I be Wizard. He's the um, um, one of the, well, Faye should be here also. I, yeah, she's here. So both Faye and IB Wizard, which is uh, David um, Good, runs helps me run the uh, the Photoshop user group on Facebook. We're about thirty five thousand nice. members, I think. David, how many members do we have in the Facebook or Facebook group now? Diane Arnold says my shirt says I can't. I have plans with my cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Willie Sakai says she's sitting in the office. Okay, she'll see. She'll, so she's listening. So we have 34,002 members currently in that group. Wow. And growing. That's, a that's a testament to your guys' energy and the, oh my God. The, the, the quality of your presenters each month is just going up and up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> We're going to have fun this morning, folks. <laughs> I'm in rare form. <laughs> So, uh, oh, I mean, Faye and David's been doing a great job in moderating the group and keep, keep, you know, kind of keeping it organized and and friendly and very informative mm -hmm. and educational. So, um, actually, I kind of like. I mean, we've been holding the Photoshop user group meetings live in person over at um, um, I'm forgetting the college, the Art Center, Art not Center, Art, not Art not Art Institute. It's the new one, oh. A, oh. a Platt Platt College. God, oh, sorry nice. about that, Platt. Um, we've been holding them live there every month, and ever since this pandemic, we've gone online, which I didn't mind it because I was already doing presentations on Twitch online, and I love the idea of, of being able to bring in a whole international audience to what we're doing. Um, even after this pandemic is done, I mean, I'm kind of wondering if maybe we should continue this. Uh, maybe we'll just do two types of meetings, one in person and one online. I mean, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Or, or combine them. Well, 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 well <clears throat> the reason why I did not combine them, that was, I did think about that, uh, Vanelli, earlier. Um, but the reason I didn't combine them was because when I did the meetings, I broadcast the meetings live from where, where, where we were located, the members wouldn't show up. Because they'll, oh. they'll stay home and watch it. Why go there? Why go there? <laughs> and so, so, I, so I cut it out. <laughs> so, it's, 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 it's like mass for the shut-ins on Sunday. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the mass on, on TV, so you don't want yeah. to search for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Th that, um, that is interesting. So, so maybe, uh, maybe hosting you know live sessions, but then uh, you know, I think these video, um, you know, these video broadcasts can enable you to tap into a whole new, new uh, bunch of, like you say, international presenters. Yeah, uh, really, really interesting concept to be able to do both. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're going to be giving out. I, I think. Are we going to be giving away a copy of? Uh, of, one of one? Yes, yes, we are. You All right. twisted my arm and okay. put me on the spot. 
So we'll do that later on. And I'm also going to be giving away uh, a one-year subscription to the Creative Cloud. That's everything Adobe oh, wow. owns. Nice. And That's if great. you and if you have won it already within the year, you can't win again. If you haven't won it, you can win. So we'll we'll do the drawing at, at the end of the meeting. Okay, we got we got over we got over thirty people already on thirty five to be exact. Um, okay. And it's growing. This is good. So so keep we putting it. Yeah, keep putting <laughs> it out, put it put it out there that we're that we're on live. Well, I tell you what, let's um let's go ahead and, and get rocking and rolling, and uh, we're gonna start with Kevin. And Kevin, go ahead. and we got Kevin. We have Robert Vanelli, and we have Angela here from Skyland. Um, an in, an incredible uh, um, a, a series of software that they do. A lot of photographers, particularly the user group members. Um, the first time you did this, Kevin, we got I got so many responses. In fact, Kevin, we have the SD put. I have a I have a I have a code right. I have a, I have an affiliates code for for members. So. Right. If we can put that code in the chat box for me, uh, I forget what it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. it's uh, I said it to you. It's SD Pug. It's SD Pug. It's okay, SD so Pug. I'll, I'll type it in there now. So, so this software, you get a discount if you use this code, and I guess all caps doesn't matter. Um, SD Pug. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. discount code. I'm going to um. Um, type that in here now. Um, you guys are not going to want to you. You're not going to want to create without this software that you're going to um, that you're going to witness today. It's uh, pretty good. Um, all right. And I don't have I given you a, a an early beta of this thing yet, Stephen? I don't remember receiving. You may have. I just didn't see I, it. I, I don't. I don't think I have. <clears throat> okay. I want to keep this a surprise to you too. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> I like surprises. It's almost Christmas time. All right. So, so Kevin, go ahead and take it away. I'm okay. Gonna, All right. I'm your screen. Uh, all right. All right. So uh, uh, once I go into into a little slideshow, slide deck mode here for a few minutes, uh, I can't see anything else on the screen. So I'm assuming everything's uh, rocking yep. and rolling. Um, well, guys, hey, thanks for, for having the Skylum team uh, here. You're, you're seeing about half of the U.S. side of Skylum. Uh, um, I'm pleased to be joined uh, by Vanelli, our director of education. Uh, he's, uh, he's taken a, a much needed break from uh, his late night writing of the user manual for Luminar AI, <laughs> which you're going to see today, and a whole whole bunch of other things. I've been keeping him busy uh, with uh, demonstrations. We're glad to be here today. And at the last minute here, over the last couple of days, we we talked uh, our good friend uh, Angela Andrew um, into joining us here. She's a, a creative artist, a fine art photographer, and she's one of the Skylum crew uh, uh, educating people on our our daily coffee breaks as as is Benelli. We have these coffee breaks on on Facebook and, and YouTube. Um, uh, every day, I think, right guys? <laughs> every day. Um, twice. Every day, twice a day. So you can you can definitely stay in touch with us. So I'm Kevin, uh, I was the first employee here in the US uh, for uh, Skylum, uh, previously known as MacFun, back in 2013. I've, I, I've worn a lot of hats and I, I still wear a lot of hats. <laughs> um, trying to take more hats off uh, as time goes on, but uh, <laughs> We'll see how that goes. Uh, it's a great company to work for. And, and so just to kind of talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do this morning, um, I want to I want to tell you a little bit, a little tiny bit about the company, give you a little introduction about why we built Luminar AI in, in the first place. Um, then I'll turn it over to my fabulous uh, uh, co-hosts co here uh, to show you some of the magic and the artistry behind uh, the, the, the photo editing app. And uh, then we'll finish up with a little bit of a, a tour on where you can get more uh, resources and more more knowledge and, and stay in touch with us. We, we hope you like what you see. So our philosophy behind Luminar AI, simple photo editing. So many people uh, get mired in the, in the muck or go down the rabbit hole of photo editing. Um, and, uh, and, we want to make that, and we want to take that away. Yeah, V. Do you have your slides show up? Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't, we're not seeing it. It's, you guys uh, aren't seeing it. Mm -mm. We're not seeing it. 
How about, there we go. Oh, there there we go. go. Yeah. So here's our here's our. I, I switched it over to my other screens, and I guess that screwed up. Sorry, guys. You guys are uh, didn't get to see our smiling faces. So there we are. <laughs> so powerful editing though doesn't mean complex. You know, we want to we want to give artists as much power as you possibly can uh, while reducing the complexity and that's been the mission for Luminar AI all along. But first a little bit about Skylum. If you haven't heard of Skylum, you know, we've been around 12 years. Uh, we got our start in mobile uh, building moto uh, mobile apps back in 2008. Uh, actually made about 65 or 70 apps. Uh, for, for the early app store back then. Uh, but in about 2010, uh, you know, our photography apps on mobile had, had been looking pretty solid. And Apple approached us about uh, converting some of that technology into Mac apps. Uh, and we were one of the first uh, photo uh, products on the Mac app store in January 2011. And we, we haven't looked back. We got about 130 employees worldwide, some in Tokyo, some in Germany some in the US. Most uh, are in our, our corporate headquarters in Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, everybody's working remotely. Uh, but uh, if you ever get a chance to, to head over to beautiful uh, Ukraine in the fall, <laughs> we, uh, we have a nice, uh, a nice second, third floor uh, offices above a, uh, above a large shopping center. So it's, it's, not, it's unlike where you'd, where you'd think a, a tech, uh, tech business would be, uh, but nonetheless, once you walk inside, it's like uh, Willy Wonka, you know, in the chocolate factory. <laughs> it's <laughs> very plain on the outside, very uh, impressive and cool, and and uh, and you know, techy on the in, on the inside. Uh, so we bought a, we actually bought a small company about four years ago, and and they hadn't actually released their their AI product yet, but we got a. We got a nice R and D team uh, from that, and started building these, uh, this, and exploring what we could do with AI and photography several years ago. And so, you know, you probably, if you if you've been on the Skylum arc, uh, Luminar uh, three had a little tool called Accent AI, which uh, I call the magic slider, and um, and that got a lot of a uh, lot of attention. A lot of people love that. And so we've gone from there. And what you're going to see today is sort of the pinnacle of where we're at. Uh, our CEO, Alex Sepko, said recently that, uh, and is, he repeats this on Slack weekly, <laughs> so we don't forget it. You know, we want to turn traditional photo editing on its ear. We want to make uh, editing so easy anybody can do it, while still um, leaving all of the control in the hands of the photographers. So, so making things simple um, to, to do, quick and easy, uh, almost uh, you know, you know, uh, telepathically uh, uh, easy, uh, doesn't, doesn't mean all the power isn't there under, under the hood. And we certainly want to put that in the hands of the, of the artists like, like yourselves. Um, so I don't have to read the slide here, but, but the idea is that, you know, you make mind-blowing content anyway. We want to make it faster and easier for you. And, and, and frankly, I think that opens up a lot of creative opportunities for you. You can explore a lot more creatively. So Luminar AI is, a, is quite a departure from, from where, we, uh, where most of us have thought of traditional photo editing. You know, we've been in this tool war with uh, Adobe, everybody's been in a tool war with Adobe or or uh, even Silicon Beach software going back to the mid '80s. Yeah, you know, for decades now, it's like who can one up the other? Who can one up the other with different tools? And and uh, while that's great, sometimes the control panels can look like this. Uh, what this poor fellow is staring at. So. You know, we took a long look over the last year, did thousands of interviews with people, got a lot of feedback and surveys, and and um, you know, we're on a we're on a path ourselves here. You know, we're not gonna we know we're not gonna come out of the gate and solve everything with AI right away, but we wanted to make sure that we we tapped into the the sort of the raw nerve endings uh, of a lot of people that we talked to. Again, a lot of the stuff is very mundane. Uh, you know, curves, you know, skin, highlight, noise and grain that, you know, there's always, uh, there's always about 
half a dozen things I would do with every photo that we've now been able to automate. And that saves me a couple of minutes. Now you multiply that by three or four or five steps and, and add in some, some instant bulk processing uh, of like photos. And you, in, you know, we, th we think we got a winner on our hands. So not to, not to pull charts in here, but uh, you know, so other people have looked at this problem too. And you can see there that so many people, you know, uh, who are doing photo editing um, don't want to. <laughs> they want to, they, they want to uh, have fun and, and, and be behind the camera. So we're going to try to uh, help, help folks do that. Um, when we first announced Luminar AI uh, back in August, uh, hues and cries uh, that, you know, we had AI in the name and people instantly thought, you were going to uh, cede all of your control. Um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> you know. Don't really understand how it works. It's a black box. Uh, all of my images are going to look exactly the same as everybody else's, and that's just not the case. So, it, it so is, Molly Sky Blue says that it, it it reminds him of Skynet. Skynet, yes. Yeah, Sky, when we when we changed the uh, name from Mac Fun to Skylum, that was one of the one of the things that made us pause. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a great comment. Um, so you know, uh, you'll see today that uh, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And uh, really, it's um, uh, AI is here to be be an, an intelligent assistant for you. So we think times have changed. When you think about workflow, you'll see it here: artificial intelligence first helps get you set up. Uh, traditional sliders, little creativity. Um, certainly you can do some manual work as well, but it, it can really be a nice fast workflow for you. And, and you choose it, you're in charge, right? AI guided, AI assisted, AI tools, and then traditional editing. And don't forget, we're talking to the Photoshop group. All this stuff runs as plugins within Photoshop and, uh, and Lightroom. The guys will show you that in, in a couple of minutes. So. Um, just for uh, th that's kind of my uh, my take on things and my my in introduction here. Um, I'd like to to turn the unless there's any questions for me specifically about the background or the history of why we made the product. Um, I'd like to turn the podium over to Vanelli and and okay. get, get the wow part of this started. All right. So so Vanelli, if you would please share your screen. Oh, it's not being shared. Should be down at the bottom yeah, of your. That's sharing. Yeah, let's see. Do you want me to stop sharing and reshare? No, go ahead and share. Um, let me see. Let me remove his. All right, but I'm not seeing. Let's see. I'm seeing. I'm not seeing your screen coming up yet. You got to be in uh, Streamyard, Vanelli, and then yeah, share yeah. the screen down at the bottom. I did. It says uh, I, I can either stop sharing. I'll, I'll stop sharing for a moment. Ready? All right. And then share. Share screen oh. one. Interesting. I I see it on the bottom. Do I, do I need to stop? Oh, oh you can see it on the bottom of your screen. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Now, Kevin, you knew I was going to start with the sports one, right? <laughs> of course, <laughs> my favorite well, picture. I have to only because this is what drew me to Skylum. Um, it took years myself um, and um, uh, and a few other photographers were creating the sports grit look all the way through Joel Grimes, myself, Joel Grimes, and the guy who actually came up with it originally was Douglas Hill or Doug Hill, and the grit look was something I really, really just love, especially for sports. And it took forever to create it. Now, watch how fast I'm going to recreate the look I've been doing. Let me hide this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if I click on hide, will that hide this little bar on the bottom? Um, let's see. Um, I don't know what that'll do. There we go. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. So here's what's really cool we have an entire set of tools but at Skylum we're um, purpose centric not tool centric so I want to create this to look like a grit look so I'm going to come over here to the creative tool because it's, it's creative and I want to use it called dramatic so I want this here to give me that look at that 
that, that grit look that I've been desperately looking for. I'm going to deep saturate it just a little bit and tone down the brightness. Look at that. With one slider, I'm about 90% there with, with the look that, I, that took me years to create and develop. So I have my look here. Now, the grit look is well known to have a lot of texture. So with Structure AI, it's human aware. So it knows that there's a face in the scene. So it's not going to affect the face like Clarity would. It'll affect the uniform and the football. So when I adjust it, look, look at the change it makes. It's not affecting him, but it's affecting everything else around him. Now, if I do want it, to affect him, which I do, and, and we purposely put dirt on his face. And the reason for the dirt was it adds extra texture um, to the scene. And when I start to edit it, look what it's doing. It's going to actually, look at that, it actually adds to the look overall. So we went from this to this in just a matter of a couple clicks. Now, what's really cool about this is my original quit look, if he were a teenager with, with acting problems, any blemish whatsoever on the face will amplify a hundred times over. So if I had a teenager with skin problems and I applied the grit look to it, it was absolutely horrible. So I'd have to go back, fix it, and then come back and apply the grit look. So in Luminar AI, we have it all set in one location. So here's face. Watch this. This is so cool. Look at that. It actually, it recognizes where the face is, and I can relight the face if I need to. Here's Here are the eyes. I'm going to enhance the eyes. Um, drop a little flare in there. I'll come back to the eyes for a moment. But it was this right here with the skin. I want to slightly, just a little bit, because again, I want the grit look to be predominant. So here we are. And there. Now let's go back to the face for a moment. Yes. Now look, look at the eyes. I absolutely love how it adjusts the eyes. Here's before. Give it a second to redraw. And here's after. I'm not going to there it is. And you can see how it just jumps out. At this point, I could change the colors of the eye. Now, if I change the color of the eye, let's go to a, we can see it better. There we go. So if I change the color of the eye, let's say to brown, well, that's great. But the only problem is I want to create this as a template so I can apply it to the entire team. So if the entire team all had brown eyes, it'd be kind of freaky. So I'll leave the eyes original. And here I have it. Now I'm looking at the image again, thinking, okay, well, what are some things in the image that's drawing me away from his face? Well, the football and his jersey are lit a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide for, with a vignette some of this here. But the cool thing about our yet is I'm able to actually choose where I want the center point to be. I'll go to an extreme just so you can see. Look at this. So I could point and put this wherever I want. And I could even add inner light if I wanted to. All right? So I have my vignette. Toning it down just a little bit. Good. Now the football isn't as noticeable as the subject. Now, if this were just one per, if I were photographing just one person, honestly, I would put probably a diffuser down here to where it cut the light off on the lower half of the body, so I wouldn't have to do this. But if I was photographing 70 kids, which I'll show you in a moment, there's no way I'd have time to do all that. So I'd let Luminar do it in a matter of just pure seconds. So here's the original. Let's see. There we go. Oh, I know. Alex, come in it. Here's the original. And here's what we created. Now, 
Let me move that back up a little bit. There we go. There. All right. So now that I have this set, I love how it looks. I can come down here and I'm going to save it. And now I have a new template. And if I come over to the template section, and remember, we're still on the, the beta version. So on the release one, move up here, I didn't have a chance to rename it when I saved it. Here I'm going to rename it. It's called Sports uh, Version, let's say, 22. There we have it. So now we have it all set. Now, how does Photoshop weigh in on this? Well, watch this. I'm going to come back to the catalog. I love how this looks here. I can apply it to any other sports that I have. Well, if I did a photo shoot, and we'll come down here. I did a photo shoot with all these um, wrestlers. Now, keep in mind one thing. And I'll show you up on the top. I call these reference photos. You want to buy a reference photo? It's nothing spectacular. You know, it's just this is the team. These were all the kids that were on the team. And then what I ended up doing is come down to the bottom. And this is what we would give the team. So that, that's just a reference photo. Nothing creative, nothing developed, nothing exciting. This is the exciting part. So these are the, the main kids on the team. Now notice this right here is how it came out of the camera. We're going to use Photoshop to extract each of the kids, put them on their own layer, or I'm sorry, put them all on one layer, and then I have them all together like this. Now when I apply that grit look to it, it's going to come out. Now there's two options we could go here. Um, option number one, here we go. option number one, would be to apply the grit look at the very end, or option two, which I did, is apply the grit look independently at each and every one of them. So this way they have individual photos and they also have a team photo. Now with the grit look, do you remember how we put the, um, the vignette on here? Well, what's really cool about Luminar, it's non-destructive. So that means that I can come back over here and I can remove that effect and I'm set. Now I'm going to do a little quality control. Because he's sitting next, because he's next to somebody of darker skin, he looks even brighter. So we'll come over here to the local masking. And what I want to do is add a basic mask. And I want to tone down the highlights big time. And I want to paint just on him. So you either do that or you put him out in the sun before the photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we live in Florida, too. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so there's no reason. There we go. Well, then again, he's, he's a red hair, red hair, so aren't they more, um, uh, what do you call it? Sunburn, uh, more prone to sunburn? Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we have it. Angela knows. <laughs> now, I was going to say, she'd be so our candidate. Here, here's the PS, so this is a PSD file. I'm going to right-click on it, show and explore. Now, from here, I'm going to double-click, and I'm going to open it up in Photoshop to show you. Now, notice, okay, so with Lumen, our, our, our philosophy, which is, different from all of us, what we're doing is quick at it. You get in there, you apply the change, you're done. You get in there, apply the change, you're done. People who work a lot with Photoshop have a tendency of feeling, well, if I don't spend five hours on an image, I didn't do my job. <laughs> so use Photoshop the way no. you always use it. Use Luminar the way it's intended to be. I would use Luminar to fix and develop the, the, the images of the kids, and then bring it into Photoshop. Let me see, Photoshop is acting up. One moment. There we go. There we go. All right, so here we are. Notice the change we just made 
isn't on it. And that's because the change is still inside Luminar. We haven't exported this. So inside Photoshop, there we are, I made this a smart um, object. Now, if I double click on the container, the smart object, it'll open up a container. And inside that container, as you all know, is the actual images of the kids and then the background. All right. Now, the reason why I did it this way, you see how I just quickly did a, did a quick extraction, plopped them onto a layer. Here's black, and actually, there we go. Um, there's black, and I'm set. I'll close this out. Now, if I'm working, so I, I went backwards for you to show you how I would use Luminar to create the sports grip look. I can start in Photoshop. <clears throat> That's not a problem. I can start in Photoshop and go over and end in Luminar. The cool thing about all this is we're not bound by steps. We don't have to do it step one, step two, step three. Imagine if you were doing frequency separation on the skin. If you don't follow the exact steps, it's not going to come out right. Here, as long as I make this a smart object, come over to the filter, now Luminar becomes a smart filter. Now I'm going to launch Luminar as a plugin, and I still have it opened as um, a standalone program. Keep in mind, Photoshop, Lightroom, Luminar, they're all memory intense programs. So if your, re if your system resources are not high, make sure you shut one of those down. Like if you have Illustrator open, you know, all of these open, it's going to cause problems. All right, so we're here. And I'll come back over to my to my templates that I created. Apply the grit look. Give it a second. And once it's there, got it. Uh, we want to get rid of that vignette we talked about. Fix him. Now, once I hit apply, it'll shoot it back in the Photoshop. And now I'm set. Now, I joke with the <laughs> kind of serious, but joking with each of these kids. Uh, this team is really big on um, positive attitudes, uh, sportsmanship. This team is huge on how they act out in, in the community. So we told each of the kids if they misbehaved or misused their wrestling skills, we could easily just click on a layer and replace them with a new kid. So that kind of keeps them. <laughs> but that's a so, good way. Of getting, that's a good way of getting rid of your kid if you get tired of them <laughs> or replace it. So, but well, here you have it. So here we are. We're using Photoshop for what it was meant to do. Photoshop is phenomenal. And it is for extracting images or people from an image. So I used the strength of Photoshop to create this composite. Once I created the composite, actually, the composite should be here. So once I created the composite, there it is. He's thinking. Yep. Let's see. He misbehaved. Gone. Next person. No. Um, <laughs> so if if you know we created and look it's not even that good i did it quickly and i knew it was going to be on black so it didn't matter because when i put it on black everything is hidden so there are certain things you have to be a real stickler on to make sure it's perfect and then there are things like that that will save you time that it's not going to make a difference so we can get rid of the kid and replace them with the cat yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, or, or what I do for lacrosse, which is really cool. So imagine all of this like this, and you have that one kid in the middle who looks like he's the captain. And you make him just a little bit bigger than everybody else because it makes it look like he stepped forward as you took the photo. Now, you can definitely tell that like, he is the captain of the team. What's really cool is you can replace the captain with anybody and then when you give them that poster, let's say it's this gentleman right here, pretend he's the captain of the team. His 
he'll be front center, big like he's the captain. But then over here, we swap him out with this one. Now it looks like he's the captain. If you want, you know, if you look at it on um, his wall for a poster. So that's what's really cool about Photoshop is it gives me choices. I use Luminar to create this look. Now, can I create this sports grit look inside Photoshop? Yes. Will it take a lot longer? Heck yeah. Is it more complicated? Yes. Um, and I think, Kevin, I gave you the example. It's like <laughs> writing an email using, you know, Microsoft Word or writing a letter in Microsoft Word or writing a simple letter using InDesign. You know, InDesign so, is way overkill to write a simple letter that should only take two or three minutes. So we can use Photoshop's facial features to make that kid to the, like, it looks like his third from the left. It looks like he's almost crying. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, right here. So, yeah, so if you want to The one to the left, to left of him, to the left of him. This one? That one, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he looks cool. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, sure you're right. So if you wanted to come up um, where it's under Liquify, <laughs> oh, well, you, you know about those new facial features? You make them smile. Rat hole. <laughs> oh, this is okay. a rat hole. <laughs> if, if, you, if you go to filter and it's like, oh damn it, uh, um, Stephen, which part yeah. of which part of they chain me to my desk? Well, working well, on the user guide, didn't you hear? It's it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's under it's, it's under filter neuro. Oh, right here. Yeah, neuro, neuro okay, filter. Oh, no, there, there it is, right there. Okay, now now go over to this is funny. This is gonna be really funny. It's gonna be real funny. Listen to <laughs> it's pretty funny. Well, there we go. So you go to the style. Let's see, style trend. No, drop down that um, um, over to the left, the far far left, the far far left, all the way to the left, left, other left, other left. There you go. Go to the one below that. There's an icon. No, 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 no. You were there. You were there. You were there. Go back to where you were. You mean over here? Okay. Oh no, 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 not there. Right there. Right there. Click that. Yep. <laughs> click on beta filters? Yeah, click click that. Oh, got you. Okay. You gotta click it. Yep, I did. There oh, we go. Okay. Yeah, no. It takes a second for Twitch. Smart portrait. Smart portrait. So click on over to this the click on smart portrait. So yep. that little dot to the right of smart portrait, the very top. Oh, turn the it on. Gotcha. oh wow, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. They, they click that. There we but go. Now, so yeah, let me get let me get the picture of the little kid. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, it, it'll put teeth in and everything. It'll change. <laughs> it'll put I'm teeth. Serious. You're laughing. I'm not kidding. Pick 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 uh pick the black kid. Which one? Third one down. Third one down from the top. It's my little buddy. Okay, that's good. Oh, good. All right. All right. So now go now take the happiness and slide it all the way to the right, all the way to the right and give it a few seconds because it's got to update. Right, where is he? You might want to zoom out a little bit. There we go. There he is. All right. <laughs> there he I can't is. I can doing this live. <laughs> go all I, the I right. It. I didn't warn you about this <laughs> part, did I? But I <laughs> it's, it's thinking. It's thinking. <laughs> No, there, no, there he is. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that scary or what? He will beat the crap out of every day. Wow. The little boy is tough. <laughs> and, and you can turn his head. You can make him angry. You can turn his head left to right. The gaze. That is definitely interesting. Oh, oh check out the gaze. Go to the gaze. Actually, okay. So, um, <laughs> you remember when Liquify first came out? We made everyone look hideous on purpose. Right. Um, that's what I think people. Well, look at this. Look what I just did here. <laughs> it's actually not bad. Before. But remember, try, he's supposed to be looking intense. Okay, try try to gaze. The gaze is like the fourth one down. Is it gaze? Is the fifth one down? One, two, three, yeah, four, right five. Here, gaze. Gaze. Fifth one down. Number five down. I got it. Okay, well, that's go right. you're, you're a half a. a all right. Two I go to the right. Go all the way to the right. Watch his eyes. Let it think. It, it takes a little bit to kind of think, and then it uh, here it comes something. Oh my god! Oh boy! Wow! If anything, I would do the anger one. Let's see what that does. <laughs> but, but that's interesting. You, you know, honestly, when you have, and I've done this before, 
Wow. Where I, you, know, you liquefied to bring the eyebrows down a little bit. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that oh, great? Man. All right. You're killing me. All right, people. So, <laughs> well, well, you, so that, that is a good example. So if, if you have somebody, like, like you said, the one, my one little buddy who you felt just didn't have that intense look. Right. Wow. Can you believe it didn't, it didn't recognize him? Why didn't it recognize this? Is it turned off? Six, seven, eight, nine. Well, it recognized nine out of the, it recognized nine kids. Huh. That's interesting. I don't know why. <laughs> 14. Yeah, the 14. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if if you saw they're on a slight angle, these three weren't recognized. Hmm. Okay, like you said, like here's a good example. You know, you could do that look. Um I'd rather do it in camera, <laughs> but if you can't. That's actually a pretty neat, neat little trick. Um, when you just lie to the kid. Sorry to say that. <laughs> we're, we're so close to Christmas. Santa's listening. Um, you, lie, <laughs> you lie to the kid. Oh, yeah. You look just like this. Look, came out of the camera just like that. Yeah, so, I think it's, I think it's nice. It's this new new Photoshop 2020 editions. You know, it's kind of very cool. That's neat. Well, so again, that, that's a perfect example of how there are tools inside Luminar like sky replacement for example so sky replacement in luminar is a matter of seconds click done move on photoshop there's a bunch of layers to it and if you're a control freak to where you want precise control and you're going to spend hours on that image you may run it through photoshop if you want a quick one that says hey look you know what this is exactly what i need you go that route um just like i showed you here I can spend a lot of time masking out each of these kids, or I knew I was going to put it on black. You can't tell that they were masked out. Um, so you have to learn to pick which would be the fastest yet most creative way in, in, the, in the workflow. So, well, there's my sports one. I'm going to turn it over to Angela. Yeah, sure. Sure. Can do that. <laughs> Angela, go ahead and share your screen. All right. <clears throat> That's some trippy stuff, Stephen. Isn't that pretty wild? That was pretty funny. Well, it's, it's interesting. We took our holiday photos uh, for the holiday cards for the grandparents uh, last weekend. And we just, for the life of us, couldn't get my son to, to give us a good hearty uh, LaRue family smile. <laughs> so we're going to give it to him whether he likes it or not. <laughs> Uh, How old is he coming? Um, he's 21. Oh, wow. All oh, right. Man. My screen is wow. shared. And we have Angela. Angela <laughs> in the house. Awesome. Thank you. Now, you, you I'm glad to be you're here. The, you're the leader of the uh, local Dark Rumors uh, photo club here in San Diego, too, right? I am. I'm the club president, and we oh, have a membership big... of really talented photographers. If you're oh, interested, you go to darkrumors.com and, cool. and check us out. We're doing everything online right now because of, you know, what an interesting year it's been. But typically, the thing that makes our club different is that we're very focused on the print. So we take our process all the way through and actually produce physical prints and bring them in for monthly critiques and have competitions. With COVID, we're doing everything online right now and everything digital, um, which makes it easier for people who are in more remote areas to join us. So that's been a lot of fun. But I am missing the actual follow through with the print. So hopefully yeah, think, next year we can get back to that at some point. And I think the way you're doing it by by doing your judging uh, by the print is so important because it's, it's it becomes the final connection between the viewer and the artist. Yeah. Um, uh, which, which, I, which I've always appreciated about the dark rumors all of the decades that I've been been involved with them. Um, yeah, we've been around a little while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's one of the oldest photo clubs in San, in Diego. San Diego. You're the oldest in San Diego. That's right. Yep. So, um, what I'm going to show you today is my workflow is primarily I I start with Lightroom and I use Luminar as a plugin. 
Um, I demo Luminar as a standalone quite a lot. I use it with Photoshop sometimes, but Lightroom is my home base. And this is what I'm most comfortable with. So I'm gonna walk you through a few of the images that I've done and a few of the successes I've had that I've really, really enjoyed that you know just completely transformed a few photos. So the first one I wanna start with is this one here that I took in Rome back in, let's see here, 2008. So when you're traveling, you don't always have the opportunity to go someplace at the exact right time of day and nor does the weather always cooperate. So even if you plan correctly and you get to someplace at, at you know, that great, what's supposed to be a great sunset, it might be blah. Or maybe you're like me and you're traveling with a non-photographer non spouse. <laughs> so you, sometimes you're out of place in the middle of the day and you just have to make the best of it. So we were up at this park overlooking the Vatican and I caught this photo. And let me zoom in here for you just to kind of give you some scale of how monstrous this place is. Those are oh. people. Wow. So Angela, yes. um, non-photographer spouses should stay at home. Well, <laughs> you know what? They like to travel too. <laughs> but sometimes that's what the, you know, those photographer only trips are for. You know, and I do those, but sometimes it's just not the way it works out. Um, at any rate, I've got this picture here of the Vatican. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and right click on it. And I'm going to go down to export and go up here to Luminar AI. And I'm going to edit a copy with my Lightroom adjustments. So we'll go ahead and let Luminar open up there for me. Hey, hey Angela, um, why why didn't you use the edit in Luminar AI? Isn't there another way to access Luminar from from Lightroom? Well, yeah, you can use the edit in, but there on some computers, some people's systems, it doesn't work right. And export always works. Plus, that gives you the option of sending the raw file if you want. With this image, I've already done a couple of minor edits in Lightroom, so that way I can take those edits with me over to Luminar. But if you prefer to open up the raw, you can do that too. Gotcha. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start by clicking through some of these templates just to kind of get a starting point. And I think I went here to Urban Styles. And let's go ahead and try. That's a really nice black and white conversion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with that and use that kind of as an inspiration point. But what I really want to do here is I want to work a little bit on my composition. Um, if I click on Composition AI, it's going to suggest a crop for me. And in this case, I'm not really thinking that's doing the image any favors. I'm going to click Reset on that. And I'm actually going to change this to a square format. And I think that works really well for this image. So I'll hit Return on my keyboard and go ahead and commit that crop. Now I want to add some interest to the sky. And this is what I was talking about when you're traveling and you're, you know, sometimes the weather just doesn't cooperate. There's not a cloud in the sky. And in this case, there is nothing there to make it very interesting. So I'm going to go over to our creative tab and go to Sky AI. Now, I have a whole bunch of skies already built in here, but I have one that I've already picked out that I'd like to use for this photo. So I'm going to go to Load Custom Sky Image, and that's going to take me into my Finder. And I have a few skies that I exported specifically for this demo. So I'm going to go with this one, the Streaky Sunrise, and go ahead and click Open. And you'll see when it applies it, it's already converted to black and white. And I like the sky because it adds a little bit of visual interest behind the dome, but it doesn't overwhelm it or take away from my subject, which is the Vatican. So from there, I can go ahead, go into my advanced settings, and there are a lot of different things you can do here. For this particular image, since we're in black and white, we don't really need to work with relighting the scene. We can add some atmospheric haze. I can bring that sky exposure down. That's gonna add a little bit more drama there. I like that. And now we can go in and work the rest of the photo. So I'm gonna go over to my essentials and let's start with some structure because I wanna bring out not only the details in the clouds, but the details on the dome. So we'll bring our structure up a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty good. I'm also gonna go into our black and white tool and work with the luminance. So that sky that we picked, I don't know if you remember when it was popped up there on the thumbnail, had a lot of purple in it. So I'm going to pull back. I'm going to go over to, I'm here in the Luminance tab. So I'm going to pull back on that magenta and a little bit on the blue and just darken down that sky a little bit further to give a little bit more contrast. When I do a black and white, I like to turn some of those tones really dark for that added drama. So the last thing I think I want to do here is add a vignette. And... I like to bring my amount all the way down to negative 100. I'm gonna make the size maybe a little bit smaller, go into the advanced settings, feather those edges for a nice smooth transition. 
maybe add just a touch of inner light. And then I click on choose subject and I can move that around and get that positioned exactly where I want it. Then I go back to my amount slider and I pull that back to the point that I think it looks good. So probably right about there. And I'll click off of choose subject. And now we can take a look at our before and our after. So by doing this, I was able to take something that was just, you know, a daytime snapshot, you know, a good memory photo, but nothing you would necessarily put in your portfolio or print out for, you know, to put up on your wall to something that actually I'm really proud of and I think is a really beautiful, striking photo. So that's something I've been doing a lot of this year is going back to my archives and looking through some of those early digital photos that I created and turning them from snapshots into something more. And I love how the sky replacement in Luminar can do that and does it so quickly. Um, so I, from there, I can go yeah. ahead and click apply and it'll take it right back to Lightroom. And then I can con continue on with the next image. So if I could just uh, jump in here, I love the way you darken the sky down so that the, the Vatican itself, you know, uh, it was separated from it. it. It's just a, it became a really striking picture. Right. Um, and I appreciated seeing your, uh, I have a similar workflow through the vignette tool uh -huh. and much, much like we have composition AI, um, I'm predicting in the future, we might have vignette AI. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> you know, the vignette, I love the vignette tool in Luminar because you can really dial in how you want it to look when, you know, with just Lightroom, if you want to really pinpoint the center, you have to go into the radial filters and it just feels a little bit more complex. Whereas with Luminar, there's, I just feel like there's a little bit more control and I can get it dialed in exactly where I want it. So. So the, the, the other thing I wanted to mention about the composition AI, uh, and this is for the, for the group at large, is, you know, what these guys are showing are, are different tools that we've infused with AI. Um, we've kind of flipped the workflow from traditional tools. So traditional photo editors, including our earlier versions of Luminar, we might have had an AI tool here and there, right? There might have been a structure AI or a, or this or that. We flipped the workflow. When your images come into Luminar AI now, they're actually analyzed and tagged, and we know a lot more about them and can present, you know, templates. And uh, again, some of the tools are, are image aware. Uh, so it's, it becomes a really cool, uh, fast workflow uh, as things go on. Go ahead. Yeah, so applying that template at the beginning just to get my black and white conversion, that got me so much closer to my finished project. I mean, I could have gone into my tools directly, clicked on the black and white conversion, worked, worked my contrast, but by clicking that template, a lot of that was already done for me. But I still had the complete flexibility to go in there and refine it to what I wanted. So it's not like it's going to look like anybody else's photo, which I love. So do you want me to go ahead and do one more here? Yep. Well, you have until one o'clock, so do as many as you like. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and look at the Yahoo. Next one. But, but uh, by the way, we're going we're gonna to take a break in about 20 minutes, and we'll take a 15-minute break. And right. then just to let everybody know. Cool. All right. So this photo is actually three exposures already merged into an HDR. I used Aurora HDR, which is another great Skyland software program. And I like this path, it leads you through the woods, but I can make it a lot more magical with Luminar AI. And it has tools that help me do that that aren't available in other programs. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna right click on this export and I'm gonna open a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And we'll go ahead and let that open up and we'll have some fun with this one and see what we can do. Are there any comments in the in the chat that I'm missing? I am checking now, and no, no comments yet. Actually, All Mandala, right. Jason Mandala just joined us. He says, I'm curious what segment of the artistic population was really wanting the AI? Are there a lot of individuals, artists saying, I wish that an AI could make these decisions for me? Um, can I answer that one? Yeah, sure. Vanelli's going to answer that one yeah on that um it's like this so dima is um ceo and the founder and he's one of the developers they look at what we're doing and all ai is really doing is taking away the mundane task the stuff that we normally do like you know when you open up a portrait 
You have to enhance the eyes, smooth the skin, remove the blemishes, um, check the eyebrows, whiten the teeth, whiten the... So these are things you, the checklist, you have to do. Well, why not let AI jumpstart all that for you? And now you're like, oh, okay, great. I have that stuff done for me. Now let me go back and tweak some of the things that I want for my own personal touch. So what AI is really doing is people are misunderstanding. They're thinking AI is taking complete over. You push one button. In fact, you push it on your camera, done. Everything is finished. You're still the artist. That's right. And all AI is doing is taking away the task that you always do on a regular image. It's doing it for that. That one that Kevin and I talked about, the accent AI is my absolute favorite tool. It automatically improves color, detail, tone, and depth. I can still open like up that. my tool, which has, oh, oh God. Uh, the, and, the, and your tone the, curve and things yeah, like that. Curve, you yeah. know, I, I, I want to take a, di a slightly different uh, approach to, to answering this question. Um, you know, it, it's true that there probably wasn't a lot of visual artists that said, you know, oh, give me AI to make my decisions for me. But I think one of the things we've stressed over the past few years as a strategy is trying to remove the complexity as a way to enable people to make more creative exploration right. in the time that they have. And right. so, it, you know, in a sense, AI helps us do that. I think I'm kind of answering the question um, along the same lines as Vanelli, but but in a different slant. Um, it, you know, if you've got 15 minutes to edit an image, um, you know, if you can explore 10 paths rather than three, right. uh, then, you know, you might get to a different uh, inspirational direction, or you might just get to that end result in eight minutes and get a second image out of it in the time remaining. So I, I kind of look at it that way. Um, um, and also just to shed a little, little bit of light, Mandala is also a, a digital painter. So he's the type of guy, whereas if you want, he, he, he decides what the lighting is going to be, um, how it's going to affect the subject, where the lighting is going to find, what grass to put in there. So he's actually picking individual subject matter to paint in where he wants it. So artists like that are people who don't rely a whole lot on AI, but they are using photography, but not in the same way as exactly. an avid photographer might be using it for, if that makes sense. Very interesting. So he uses something like Painter? Yeah, yeah. Painter or Photoshop. And, and, and they, enjoy, or, or they enjoy the process. Yeah, Some of them actually enjoy the, you know, spending hours on an image um yeah. I, I i took an infrared i took an infrared photography course uh, last month and um one of the one of the people who actually lived in turkey uh she was a, a digital painter and uh you know we would have these meetings and she will have worked on an infrared uh right. hand colored uh thing for for three weeks <laughs> by the time well, she that, 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 it. really amazing stuff yeah, but, but she yeah. was actually printing and, and right. hand watercoloring it too oh, because right. scanning it back in so it's crazy because whereas hdr would be important to photographers to a painter they just paint in the hdr yeah, exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, but even for painters i think a lot of your software um gives really adds the icing on the cake because once they're done with their painting imagine bringing their digital paintings into luminar or aurora or something like that and then looking at the other possibilities of where that painting can go that's a great point i hadn't even thought about that yeah yeah good stuff good question yeah what are you gonna do with this picture angela all right so i'm gonna go ahead and make this feel really mystical and dreamy and so Diane Arnold, by the way, says this is a wonderful photo. Oh, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my Accent AI a little bit. And what this does is balance out the tones. You can see it pop the color a little bit, um, pulled down the highlights a touch, opened up some of the shadows. I don't wanna do too much because since I've already done that HDR process, it's already fairly well balanced in that respect. I might add a little bit of structure just to get a little bit more detail in there, but not too much. Uh, something about all the leaves and shrubbery it can get really crunchy really fast. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna pop over to my creative tab and let's we can start having some fun. So the first thing I wanna do is add some sun rays. 
And this is one of those tools that I think is highly controversial because a lot of people overuse it and it becomes obvious that they added it. The key to using Sunrays is to make sure that nobody knows that they were added artificially. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the amount slider really high so we can see where it's placed. And then I'll click on place sun center. And what I wanna do is have some rays coming down directly onto my path. So I'm gonna pull that back up here and position that so those rays are coming through the trees right there and hitting my path. Now it's still looking way overdone. It's a little, you know, it's definitely still artificial. So we're gonna work with some of these other settings to make this look right. I'm gonna pull that sun rays length back a little bit. Penetration, I might pull back a little bit. And what that means is where how much, how much is coming through the light parts and the dark parts. So the dark parts tend to block where the rays are and it comes through in the light areas. The higher the penetration level, the more it's gonna come through those dark areas. So I pulled that back a little bit. Since my sun radius, I pulled it off of the, the canvas, so it's up here above the picture. There's not a whole lot of the sun to see. If you have the sun down in your photo, you can adjust the radius and the glow and all of that. And I typically pull that back to zero because I'm always gonna to try to place that where the sun would naturally be. So then let's go to our ray settings. We can adjust the number of rays that we have. And to make it look a little bit more natural, I'm gonna pull that down a little bit lower. Maybe right about there. And you can randomize those rays just to have a little bit of fun and, and see what happens. Maybe, maybe pause that right there. And then warmth is where this really gets to look more natural. I'm gonna pull that sun rays warmth up and you'll see that's warming up those rays of light coming in. I don't wanna take it too terribly far. Perhaps right about there, I think looks good. Now we can go back up here to our amount and pull that back to where it looks a little bit more natural. And we can change that overall look a little bit more, darken up some of that area around it. Let's see here. And I usually play with this. I go back and forth between different sliders to go ahead and kind of get it dialed in just right. I think that looks pretty nice. So, Let's see here, Maybe pull back on that amount a little bit more. Again, I'm wanting to have that light coming down onto the path. So I might actually lengthen those rays back out right about there. So the next thing I wanna try, and my original version didn't have this because earlier versions of Luminar didn't have this tool, but we now have in Luminar AI, this atmosphere AI. So this adds a realistic fog or mist and can really add an element of mystery to an image. Um, and it has AI depth mapping. So it kind of rolls in across the image and looks you know, pretty natural. So I usually like this layered fog. I'm gonna pull the amount up very high. Now and this can be real that. handy for digital painters that are making environment studies. Yeah. And, and they can put in the haze in there very quickly um, using this feature. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. So maybe right about there just to add a touch of mystery as you're going down this path. And I love the way the Atmosphere AI interacts with the sun rays. So from there, I wanna go to one of my favorite tools is Mystical. And if we go ahead and drag this up, you'll see it, it creates a certain softness and it darkens certain areas and just adds a little bit of, a little bit more drama to it. So you can open up those shadows a little bit more if it does too much or even darken them down a little bit. I feel like it over smoothed a touch, so I pull that back typically a little bit. And then the thing I love most about this tool is the warmth slider down here in Colorize. And where if you go into your temperature intent sliders in your white balance, it's gonna warm up the whole image. This warmth only warms up that glow that we just added. So we can pull that up and just warms up the light overall. So do that a little bit. I think I might go back up here to my atmosphere AI and pull that back just a touch and go back to my sun rays. I kind of feel like they're a little too warm right now. So I'll go down here to my sun rays warmth and pull that back maybe a little bit. So that way the light all kind of matches and everything comes together. So let's take a look at where we've gone. Like there's the before and there's the after. It completely changes the mood of the image. Now, if we wanted to take this even a little bit further, we can go down to our local masking and really make that path, uh, really make that stand out. So we can darken the ground a little bit over here and then lighten the path through the trees so your eye is led through the image. 
So we can go here and add basic. And I'm gonna start by darkening down some of the edges. So I'm gonna pull that exposure down, probably right about there. And I'm gonna make my brush opacity probably right around 50. I'll use the bracket keys on my keyboard to make that brush size bigger. And then just start brushing this in on the sides here a bit, make that path stand out a little bit more. Make the brush size a little bit smaller and come in through here a little bit, but through there. And then I can go ahead and add another one. So let's go here and add another basic. And on this one, I'm gonna bring that exposure up just a hair. And again, make my opacity here on the brush about 45, you know, 50, somewhere in there. And then we can start just painting that in right here on our path. And then pull that back down to get a little bit smaller, get, you know, back here into the trees. Oops, too small, too small. Right, get back in there. And it just leads you right through the picture. Um, we can also work a little bit with those tones of the leaves if we want to make it look a little bit more fall. We can go back over here to our essentials. And in our landscape tool, we have this foliage enhancer. So I can pull that up and you'll see that's making the greens really overwhelming, which isn't pleasant. But if we go into the advanced settings, we can change the hue of those leaves and take everything a little bit more towards the yellows and we can adjust that a little. There we go. I think that looks nice. So before and after. And the final thing I think I wanna do to this image is add a vignette. So I'm gonna pull my amount slider down Leave the size, I might pull that back down a little bit. In my advanced settings, I definitely want to add the feather. And again, a little bit more inner light. Hmm. Nice. And I'm going to choose my subject and I'm going to place it probably right about there. I might make my roundness a little bit more here too. Change the shape of that vignette a bit. All right, and now we grab our mount slider and we can adjust that to where it needs to be. So now we have sunlight coming through the trees, lighting our path and it just leads us right through the woods. So there's the before, actually I have to click that off first, before and the after. So what do you guys think about that? Very so, cool, very so cool. Then I can hit apply, it takes me right back to Lightroom and I can often process another image. Cool, that's great. No, I Good. would love to see, now, now you showed us one image where um, you said you processed it from uh, using Aurora, using yes. HDR. I would love to see you take this, maybe, maybe, maybe you have another image available to take us through that process all the way through what you would do um, with the other software from Skylum. Um, you know, I could, I could do that maybe a little later on in our session. I don't yeah. have any brackets in this, uh, cause I just did a small catalog for this presentation. Yeah. I didn't pull over any brackets for that, but yeah. I can certainly do that a little later on, maybe after the break. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe after uh, Vanelli, uh, while Vanelli's yeah, doing, definitely. I, I do have plenty Thanks. of bracketed images. Okay, <laughs> great. All right. So, so, how do you guys feel? Do you guys want to take a break now, or do you want to do something Whatever. else? I'm fine. How's everyone else feeling? Um, I'm fine to continue, or we can take a break, right. or whatever. I tell you what. Let's let's do a break. All right. Let's do a break. Let me let me bring up my fifteen minutes schedule. It's about eleven fifteen already. Yep. Um and we'll and we'll start promptly at um at eleven thirty. Okay. Fifteen minute timer. And do we stay logged on or what do we do? Well, I am going to hold on, just give me a minute. Um I am going to there we go. I'm gonna share my screen in just one moment. You do nothing. You just okay. stay where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I control your screen. Ah, uh, the outer limits. That's the, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was just getting ready to say that. Because <laughs> I'm old. That's because I'm older right. than you I think. I love the old outer limits. The new ones kind of sucked. <laughs> don't you so think good. the new outer limits kind of sucked? <laughs> you know, I, I, to tell you the truth, I didn't uh, get into the new one or the new Twilight Zone uh much i need to maybe take a a fresh look at both of those but i i i have these fond fond memories of my youth <laughs> yeah i thought they were a little more creative uh the the yeah. original ones 
Um, but okay. uh, there we go. So, Looking so good. 15 minutes, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and start it. It's 11.15 uh, wow. now. We'll get okay. started at 11.30. Probably stretch your legs and get snacks or whatever you want to do. Sounds good. Sounds good. Hope everybody's enjoying the show so far, and we'll see you in 14 minutes and 45 seconds. And if anybody has any questions, now would be a good time to post them, and then we can get to them right after the break. Yep. All right. See you guys Sounds in a good. video. Okay. And this would be a good time to kind of, you know, if you want to post something out to Facebook and Twitter to bring more people in, this would be a good time to do so now. Will do. Also gives me a chance to to charge up the AirPods. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna have to.
We have about two minutes left. Okay. Okay. All right. So we go live in 30 seconds. <clears throat> oh, here, let me bring everybody up here again. 19 seconds. Kevin's like gone. <laughs> Kevin, say out of here. <laughs> Have a nice bye. That's right. Cool. There we go. We are back. Get that out of here. That is out of here. Okay. So um, let's go take a look at my Twitch uh, uh, questions. See, let's see, see how many questions here. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Everybody's giving me a hard time, and it probably wasn't me. I probably wasn't the one you heard eating, but anyway, I get in trouble. <laughs> I, sh I shut my camera off and muted my, my mic. I'm nothing if not a pro. <laughs> I just unmuted my mic. <laughs> right. So, 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 Mandala says, if you like what you see in the broadcast, guys, consider subscribing. Thank you, Mandala. Appreciate that. So, um, okay, so it, for those of you out there who are new to Twitch, um, I do these streams every week. I, I probably, I do more than one or two streams every week. So the way it works is it's free. It kind of works like Creative Live. It's, it's free to attend on the live. And then after that, everything is recorded so that you can come back. If you pay the $4 a month, you can come back and watch the broadcast as much as you want, anytime you want. And there's some really good broadcasts here. Very educational. Uh, we do a minimum of three hour presentations, whether it's my own personal streams or through the user group, um, is well worth the money. Um, I do a lot of 3D stuff here as well. So for those of you, for those of you out there who are really into 3D, um, you you can definitely um, um, you know watch those as well. So um, Skylum has given us a special discount code. Okay. And that discount code, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm putting, I'm typing it in right now in the chat box. Our discount code is because you guys are gonna want to have this software for yourself. Um, it's SD Pug, okay, and that stands for San Diego Photoshop Users Group. I just put it into the chat box, so everybody grab that code, use that code. Um, it gives you a nice little discount off the software. And that's a special code just just for our group. Um, and and I've, uh, I put my uh, personal email address in for, for yes. Skylum. So yeah. if anybody has any anything uh, any anything that comes up, uh, I can uh, help mitigate it. Okay, cool. So uh, so that was Kevin. He's he's the leader here for for the the sales here in the United States uh, of Skylum. Um, and his, as you can see, his email, Kevin at Skylum.com. You can definitely contact him directly. Great group of people, a uh, great guy to work with. I think, um, I think you guys are going to love this, this, this product, uh, you know, in conjunction with Photoshop. Um, so Mandala says, is it sub based limited license or long-term license? It, it's, it's what's called a perpetual license. So once you buy it, you own it. Okay. So um, you own it. Guys. 
At the end of the presentation, I'll, I'll walk you through uh, some of the resources, and we can cover um, cover okay. some of the other uh, you know, aspects okay. of purchases. Okay, fantastic. So who's next? Is it I, still, I, or is it Vanelli next? Vanelli. yep. All right, cool. So I'm going to share your screen. Cool. Take it away. All right. So we talked about how Luminar AI embraces artificial intelligence, and it starts right from the very beginning with templates. So here's a catalog of some of the images that I have. Um, and these are beautiful landscapes. Well, when I click on templates, let me go back here. I want to use this one. When I click on templates, AI goes right to work. It automatically analyzes this image and it looks to see, you know, what, like it knows there's water in the scene. Um, it's part of nature. So it automatically recognizes this as a landscape. So I'm going to click on uh, nature, for example. Now, this segment I want to show you, it's kind of combined the two. This is how quickly you can create a style. All right. I love these black and white ones. Look at this. So in one shot, look at that. I can just come through. And typically, once you start working with these, you'll know which templates are your favorite. And then if you like it a, a real lot, you click the heart icon here, and it'll show up in your favorites. So it makes it that much faster to go through these. So let's say I like this one. But you know what? I do want to check out. Um, what it felt the water template should be. Uh, let's see. We'll go through some of these. Ooh, that looks nice. I like Silver Flash. Oh, I like this one a lot. I'm going to make that my favorite. All right, let's just keep checking a couple others just to see. So already, well, that's really nice too. So already I created three or four different styles of the same image. I'll look through one more. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to stick with this dark and rich. Let's see. Yeah, this one. It's coming up. And by the way, if you notice up here, if it's illuminating, that means it's it's processing. And so we come in. And there we have it. Now I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to take it a step further. So I like what it suggested. But let me get back to it. Make sure. Oh, silver, that's why. So there was silver flash, and it was dark and rich. Yeah, dark and rich was the one I selected. Or was it silver flash? Nope, I'm so sorry. It was silver flash. So here we are, silver flash. Like you said, I really like how it looks. I'm going to come over to the edit tool or the edit tab. And now from here, I am noticing it used the black and white conversion. And anything with a little dot next to it here is showing me that it used those tools to create this template. So what's really cool about this, it's self-learning. You can actually learn how we created this. Some of my old, old favorite um, plugins back in the day, you click on it. But then you had no idea what it did because it, it hid it behind the scenes. Here, everything is up front. And so if you see a dot next to any of these tabs, it means these tools or these tabs here were used in the creation of this. I'm going to add a little more structure to this scene. Oh, I like that there. And let's come to the Pro Tools. Super Contrast. So now with super contrast, this takes highlights to a whole new level. So back here where we have the, the light tool, which essentially you see, everyone's seen this tool before. You've seen this in Lightroom and in Photoshop. Way too many sliders and too many options for me. That's why I love Accent AI. It does the majority of the work there and if you notice here, we have highlights. Well, under the Pro Tools, for Super Contracts, we can control the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So, 
instead of just controlling one, I'm able to balance between all three. So I want to make it just a real rich black and white. There we go. All right, so here's before and here's after. So I like where that's at. And again, I can come down here and I can save it as my own. So when I come back to the templates, I can look off to the side and these are the favorite ones. Now, this was the one I originally did for this image a while back. Let's click on that. It's thinking. And it. Now, ironically, I actually like the new one we just created better. So I'm going to stick to this one, the one we just created. So now I'm going to come back over to the catalog. If I right click on this one, adjustments, there's two ways of syncing it. I can copy the adjustments, come over to another one, right click, paste the adjustment. So that's one way of doing it. So now I'm going to have all of these images here consistent. So I'm, the style is going to be the same. If I click on here and it's blue, well, I'm pressing the shift key as I select the rest of the images. If I go back to the one selected in blue, right click, adjustment, synchronize. Now it's going to synchronize the adjustments onto all of them. There it is. So now I just took, let's say we went to Yosemite Park and we took 75 to 100, let's be more realistic. Let's say we have 12 of our absolute favorite photos that we want to put you know, in, in a gallery or into your portfolio, and you want the style to be the same. This is how we do it. All right? Now, let me take that a step further. Speaking of creating galleries, so we're going to use Photoshop to create the template, but then we're going to use Luminar as a smart filter to change whatever image we put in here. So I came up with a black version, a white version, and then if you're part of PPA or any clubs that do print, this is formatted for 24, let's see, I believe it's uh, 24 by 16. So it has the maximum 20, 24 for the print competition. Inside is a three to two ratio. So that means that no matter what image you pull from your DR, uh, DSLR, if it's a three to two ratio, it'll fit perfect in this spot. And I made a white version too, right? So I need to go to this one, right click, let me get back to it. Here we go. I'll right click and I wanna show an explorer. Now that I see it in my Explorer, um, template, gallery, print, black. Template, gallery, print, print, black. There we are. Now I'm going to open this up in the Photoshop. So instead of me going out of um, Luminar to try to find where the heck that photo is, I'm able to search for it right inside Luminar. So let me, there it is, pulling it in. Photoshop, I don't know why is it's taking a little bit longer than normal. Maybe because we're running so many um, high power applications. Let me shut one of them down. Shut it could them. be just your your, your uh, screen sharing is taking from your, your graphics card resources a little That's bit. True. There we go. And it's almost there. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so I created this, and this is where you, I, you need Photoshop for this. You need or graphics pro, or a layout program. Maybe InDesign, you do the same thing in InDesign, but I find that doing it in Photoshop is a little bit easier for me. From here, uh, let's do view, let's not show the extras. All right, so all I did was when file new, and then image size, let's see. Yeah, so this is a, a 24 by 30. <clears throat> so this is a, a 30 by 24 print, which is the standard size you can get printed. 
Um, we were at Photoshop World one year, and I asked, I'm not going to mention the person's name. I said, hey, just out of curiosity, what size print is that? He, he looked at it and said, uh, it's 36.7.199, whatever, by 27.6. Uh, well, that's a custom print size. Won't that cost extra to print? <laughs> and he said, well, I humbly tell you, people who buy my prints don't care about the frames. They don't care how much they have to pay for the frame. I said, okay, but the people who buy my prints care about the print frame. So can't we trim that down to a, a standard size? His comment was, no, I'm the artist, and I want every pixel to count. I'm saying if you're selling these prints and you have to buy the frames for them, Make it a standard size. All right, so here we have it here. Now, I created it as a smart as a smart object. I added the stroke after the smart object. Now, this here can all be changed to whatever you want. Now, watch this. When I double click on the smart object, oh, look at this. Another smart object appears. This is where Luminar is being applied. Now, why is this so cool? Watch this, right click. I want to replace the contents of this image. And I want to replace it, let's see, with um, this one. So now I'm telling it, hey, I like that image, but I want to replace it with a different one. It's going to find the image, bring it in, once it brings it in to Photoshop, it automatically launches <laughs> Luminar. It's going to apply the exact template that I created for this particular look. It'll apply it. And once it does, it'll shoot it back into Photoshop. There it is. Oh, I love that look. And now the white trim around it means that that image was smaller than what I had for the print. And really, I have a feeling it was uh, the pixels were a little bit different, which is no big deal. Here it is, Control T for Transform or Command T. And I believe it's Alt. Yep, it is. So if I hold the Alt key down as I stretch it, it'll take it from the center point all the way through. Now, let's hope it doesn't run a little bit on again. So now it's going to reactivate that plugin, or yeah, the, the plugin we just did. Oh, it is going to run a little bit That's one part of the smart objects which kind of bothers me is you make a change like we just did. It's assuming you made a change a drastic change, so it has to run the program again, the filter, to apply the filter to the new change you just made. There it is. And let's see, once it comes back. So this is where if you were to do 10 to 15 of these and you want the consistency to be all the way through, I'd actually create like a batch file for this to where um, I'd have Photoshop, Photoshop go out to the folder, grab the images, do what it's doing here, control S saving it. And then when it comes back, let's see, here it comes. Boom, it replaces it. And then I can put a different text here. So that's one way I can to create your style using Luminar. So you saw how quick it was to create this look or this style. Now I'm going to use Photoshop to create the actual template for the printing. So what did you think of that? Nice. You, you had that slight pause there. And I'm like, oh, please, guys, say we didn't get disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> It's cool it workflow. Is. I love how quick it is to replace the images 
in a template and to do a series for whether it's for a gallery or for your home gallery or you know whatever or even for sharing on the web you can format them like this to share on the web and they look cool yeah you know and when people say some i've heard several people say well how come luminar doesn't have a text tool because we're not a graphics program photoshop is a graphics program designed for graphic artists with photoshop with photography tools in it luminar is a photography program. It's designed for you to be creative. Um, it's not meant to take the place of Photoshop. So here's the perfect way to where you can marriage the, the two together, a perfect marriage. You need templates, and technically, this really should be done in um, uh, Illustrator. If I want to be extreme, if I were to make this billboard size, I would do this in Illustrator. But for this print, that's more than, than, than fine. Very cool. All right. Love what do you it. have for us, Angela? Or are there any questions? I'm checking now. I guess if, uh, let's see. I don't see any. I don't see any either. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go next, Angela? Sure. I went ahead and pulled up a few. Uh, few brackets so we can play with those. Okay. Let's get that off the screen. Come on, there we go. All right, so I went into the same uh, shoot where I had the one where we walked down the path. And this was another one from that day. I think it was just even a few minutes before I took that one. So let's go ahead and run these through Aurora. Now looking at these, so here's my, um, my middle exposure. And I'm gonna take a look here at the histogram up in the upper right and see which ones I need to use. So those first three, definitely. This one, I am uh, just barely not touching the left there, but this one is so blown out. I think I'm gonna probably forego using this brightest exposure and just use these four because I think they cover all of the tones that I need. If you end up bringing in a really overexposed image into an HDR bracket and it's not necessary, it can kind of throw off your entire result. So only bring that that exposure in if you have areas that are really blocked up in the shadows and that's the only exposure you can see those details in. Otherwise, leave it off. Sometimes it's better to use just the exposures that you need. So what I'm gonna do is just right click on these, go to export, and then come up here to Aurora HDR. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and open source files. And that's going to load all four of those exposures into Aurora HDR. And I'm gonna click on auto alignment. Always, always, always do that. Even if you're on a tripod, which I was, it always makes the result a little bit better. And then go into the settings. And in this case, there was a little bit of movement in between each exposure, it was subtle. But with trees, um, leaves and things like that, they're very susceptible to the slightest breeze. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my ghost reduction, but I'm gonna change that to low. You wanna make sure you keep your ghost reduction at the lowest possible setting, because the higher you go with that, the more artifacts that are gonna be introduced and the less it's going to be, less flexibility you'll have in editing. So keep that as low as possible. Color denoise, typically a good thing to turn on as is chromatic aberration reduction. And then we'll go ahead and click create HDR. And let those load up. So, so by by clicking all of those, it does take a little bit longer to to, to process the initial merge. Exactly. Uh, but, but you're saying this, there's a little bit more flexibility. I'd never heard that low ghost reduction uh, tip before. Um, yeah, so it's it's made yeah. a huge difference for me, and and the low works on almost everything. Now, if you have a ton of movement, or somebody who's walking fast through a scene, and you want to freeze that, you know, one of those, and not have a ghost of all of them, um, you you might have to use a higher level, but it really does make a huge difference in the flexibility you have in your editing. Gotcha. All right, so now I've got my merged HDR up here on the screen. I typically only do some really minor changes here in Aurora before I send it back to Lightroom and then go on to Luminar. So here I'm gonna go ahead, pull my highlights down a little bit more, get a little bit more drama going on here in the reflections and in the sky. Um, I might even go into my color. Hmm. Take a look at this here. You know, I don't think there's really anything else I need to do here. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And then we'll take it into Luminar AI and really make this thing come alive. So let that load up. Coming on in. 
right. There we go. So that brought that right back into Lightroom. So I'll right click on this one and I'm gonna go down to export up to Luminar AI. And on this one, because I haven't made any changes in Lightroom, it really doesn't matter if I open source file, files, it's gonna open the TIFF or I can create another TIFF. It doesn't, doesn't matter in this case. Go ahead and pop that open. And now we can have some fun with this one. So we've got some great reflections to work with, some beautiful trees, you know, lovely sky. It was such a pretty night and I love the fall colors. It's something we got a lot of on the East Coast. We don't get a whole lot here on the West Coast, at least not in, in Southern California. So let's go ahead and pop straight into our edit module. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of Accent AI. And that's doing some really nice stuff right there. It's making those reflections come a little bit more alive. It's making some of those colors in the trees really come alive. Really pretty. Let's add some structure. Not too much because we want to keep this water looking nice and glassy. We want to bring out a little bit of that mid-tone contrast here with the trees. All right. So this is where HSL comes in really handy. And you can do this in Aurora HDR as well. But we can start manipulating individual colors. So in this case, we've got a lot of reds, oranges, and yellows here in the tree. And I really want those to come out. So I'm going to go here to my saturation. And let's just add a little bit more saturation to those oranges. A little more saturation to that yellow. And more saturation to that red. Now, I think the green is a little bit over the top. So I actually am probably gonna go here to my hue and take those greens a little bit more towards yellow and back to luminance and darken those greens. So that way, the all of those beautiful fall colors are what are, are, what are standing out, not so much of the really you know, green foliage here along the, on, um, along the edge of the water. We can even tone those down further. I'm gonna go to my saturation again and just slightly desaturate those greens. We can also go down to our landscape tool and again, use this foliage enhancer. So I'm gonna pull that up and you'll see it's making the greens more intense. But then if we go down to the advanced settings, we can change that hue. And I don't wanna make that water look muddy. I just wanna pull it back a little bit. I kind of feel like those are a little too saturated in there still. So for that, what I might do is go here to my local masking, go to basic and just pull the saturation down overall here and get my brush, make that a lowish opacity and make my brush size a little bigger. I'm just kind of brush and a little bit less saturation right through that area, maybe even darken it down just a touch. All right, and now we can start really working with some of these colors and things happening here in the sky. So I'm gonna go back to my essentials, go back here to this AI, um, Enhance AI, and let's do some of the sky enhancer. Make some of those clouds really pop. And we can work with the colors a little bit more here with the blues and the reflection in the sky. I'm gonna go to my luminance and I'm gonna grab that blue slider and I'm gonna darken that down. A little bit. It might even add a little bit more saturation to that blue. Yeah, not too much. That tends to make those clouds look a little too blue and I'm not caring for that. We might even have some cyan tones in there. Not too much. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Let's see here. We can go to our erase tool and get rid of some of these little specks here in the water. And if you have a lot of these, you might want to do it in Photoshop. You can go through them a lot faster. But if you only have a few of them to deal with, this will take care of it and those will go away. Is there like an auto feature where it would automatically find the spots for you and then allow you to choose? No, we don't have that yet. Okay. <laughs> Just ask. That would be cool though. So from there, I think what I might do, let's go over to our creative tab and let's use some of that mystical. And pull that up. There we go. That's doing some cool stuff. And let's see here, we pull the smooth this back a little bit, go into colorize, warm that up. Ooh, there we go. I like, I like that. All right, and then we can go back to our essentials and add a vignette. Bring that amount down all the way. I'm gonna make that size really small. We'll go into advanced settings and I'm gonna make this round that way. Bring that size back up a bit. Man, that's a nice for a nice smooth transition. Silhouette on steroids. Yeah. 
a little bit of inner light there. And then we'll click on choose our subject and bring that up right about there. And then grab that amount slider and adjust that. So our eye is really drawn to this area, those trees, that really gorgeous yellow one. We could even get in there with our brush and darken some of the areas around it a little bit more if we wanted to. Um, a ton of other other things that we can do here, but, but I'm where really liking where take, it's at right now. What, where did you take this photo? That was in Mariners Park in Newport News, Virginia. Oh wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's this park is so cool. It's got this. I think it's a man-made lake, but it's got I think about five miles of trail all the way around it. And it's so just in the in the fall. It's so gorgeous. So I could ride my mountain bike on that trail. I don't know if they allow bicycles. It's a walking trail. Oh, okay. You might be able to take your bike on that. I can't remember if they had a sign that said no bicycles. I don't remember seeing any bikes out on the trail, though. It was a pretty narrow path in some areas, okay. but really, really beautiful place, right. especially in the fall. Okay. So what do you guys think about that? Once you're done, you can always click apply and then take it right back over to Lightroom. And carry on. I guess Ivy Wizard had a question here. He says, is there is there a time in which you do not need to use ghost reduction? If there's no movement, if there's no movement between your brackets, then keep it off. Okay. In this case, I turned it on because the tree, there was a slight breeze that day mm. and there was a little bit of movement in the trees and I wanted to do my best to make sure all of those details stayed relatively sharp. Okay. So you can see there still is, I, I could probably have used a slight bit higher of ghost reduction on this one, especially these ones here up at the top you can tell there was a little bit more movement. So maybe even medium would have been the better choice. The, the, there's really no penalty to using it. it. It won't ruin the picture. It just takes slightly longer in that initial processing phase. For the ghost reduction? Well, the there's, there is actually a penalty for using it because, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, so there? what it does is oh. it takes whatever reference photo you choose and anywhere where there's movement, it references off that photo. So you lose some of your tonal flexibility in those areas. So if you have something that's got a lot of blocked up shadows and that's where the movement is, you might end up trying to brighten that up. But since it kept that darker reference photo, you're actually going to end up with a lot of noise in that area and artifacts. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. I would just usually do it because I, I couldn't remember if there was a lot of movement that day, but <laughs> I can recover the, recover the shadows later, but I get your reasoning. That's good. Yeah. It's just uses, use as little ghost reduction as possible. Okay. Um, if you need to use it, you need to use it because if it's going to compromise the image to have a ghost, well, obviously that's less desirable. So, so, um, so um, through cat eye says, uh, I like the workflow on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she does. Yep. Mom approves. Mom approves. <laughs> Mom's <laughs> also a photographer and she also does HDR. So. Ooh, so you have a cool mom. I have a very cool mom. I have the best <laughs> mom. I'm very lucky. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> and I'm not just saying that because she's listening. <laughs> like, like, oh, you have the best mom. Like, like you have more moms to compare it to. Well, you know, <laughs> I talk to people. You know, my mom's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Show us more. So, yeah. Vanelli, do you have another one to share with us, or should I pop in another another image got, over here? Yeah, I'll I'll do the aviator quick. And then you can okay, cool. Right. We'll, we'll go to Vanelli, and then we'll come back to uh, to Angela. I'm gonna All add right. Vanelli to stream. Cool. Well, this is a nice one. Wow. So this was the aviator that started my whole aviator series, and the funny thing that happened was the original one was actually more of a sepia color. I used Nick Silver Effects Pro. Well, when Nick went under, I reopened that image in Photoshop. Let me do this here. When Nick didn't go under. Well, let me rephrase it. When Google took over and it kind of became a dead program, I should say. Um, when it became a dead program, um, I stopped using it and then when I went back to reopen it inside um, Photoshop, I, I couldn't find it, so we converted it back to color. And I looked at it and thought, oh, wow, I actually like the color version. So mm. I went through and did a whole series on color. And by the way, I ended up going back and re-downloading Nick Silver Effects 
So then my smart object fixed was fixed. So yeah. I've learned from now on, no matter what plugin I'm using, once you're done using it as a smart object, make a make a make a copy of all the all the layers together. What is it? Shift Control Alt E, or um, Command Shift Option E, and you'll be able to copy all of the layers and make it one flat layer up on top. Right. So if something ever happens in the future, at least you have the original. All right. So I guess I guess DXO owns uh, Nick now, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I right, so here we are with the Aviator. Now I'm just gonna work inside Luminar to make it a little bit easier here. Now from here, well, I'm sorry, let me show you what we're gonna turn it into. This is what we're gonna turn it into. All right. So we're gonna start with this, and this will be our end result. All right. And again, if that's the style you like, it's like HDR. You saw how Angela did it. It looks really cool because it wasn't overdone. Some people like the over-the-top HDR. Some like it in the middle. Some like it to where you can't really tell, but it's there. So that's where you can decide here how much of it on the bottom here. You can decide how much of it you want to apply. All right? So first step, I'm looking at this. I know I want to replace the sky. I know I want to enhance her. And I want to throw a texture on it. So I already know what I need to do to get to make this look the way I want it. So let, let's start with her first. So if I come here to the create to the portrait tools, I always start with face relight just to make sure it's finding the face. I'm not making a change to it, but I like it. I can even slim the face. In this case, she's already slim slim but I know she want me to bring in just a little bit. Eyes, enhance, remove dark circles. Now, do you remember I said earlier, when you start doing something over and over and over and over again, that's where AI kicks in? Well, guess what? It's the same thing here. I always start with these portrait settings. So I might as well make this, in fact, let me come up here, and enhance it right about like this and here. Good. So those right here, look at look at her face, look at her eyes. Oh, and one more time, bring her skin. Now, I am going to go a little over the top for this one because you'll see the moment we do the, the filter effect to it and remove any blemishes. All right. So those are the tools I normally start with. So why not create a template on that? So when you come to the template, users, here it is. And again, this is a beta version. Um, so I'm doing one extra step. Normally I could just rename the template as I created it. Well, you get the gist. So I have to, I wanna rename that template to let's say skin softening. So now I know that every time I go to do a portrait, I just click on the, the template and instead of me having to go back in and do all those settings, it's automatically there. Now, if it's over the top, then I'll go in and edit certain things. All right, so now that I have her looking really good, now I can start to apply some of the creative changes to it. I do wanna change the sky and the only reason why I want to do that is I want to add a little more, more motion to it. That's too much. Uh, sky 4. Let's see. There we go. I like that. So now I have that all set. What creates that dramatic effect? Obviously, come over here. The dramatic tool. <clears throat> so I'm going to crank that sucker way up. But I want to bring the brightness down, and I don't want it as desaturated. So already, much like my grit look, it, it, it's falling into place. Now I'm going to come over and add lots of structure. 
And again, it's not going to affect her, but it'll affect around her. And then boost is going to intensify the structure. So think of this boost much like, um, well, HDR. So, so the boost would be much like a boost to, to intensify the structure that gives that HDR look to it. All right, so I have that all set. Now I'm going to come over to the Pro Tools. Now, Super Contrast, I want to adjust the highlights on our face. And let's see. There we go. Good. Good. So I brought more contrast back, back onto her. All right. Now, like we did earlier, draw attention to her. Let's use the vignette. Select her. Good. And there. All right. Now, two tools I want to come over to is the local masking. And I want to add the two tools, basic and texture. So basic is like the light panel, similar. Um, what I want to do here is underexpose the image. Let's see. Right about here, maybe by, let's see, a half a stop. Or okay, right about here. And, I, and all I want to um, underexpose the lower half of the scene, not the top half. So now every the, the majority of our tools have layer mask on them. So it's really cool that you can have a tool mask applied to individual tools. So you can really develop the, the fine tuning of the local change versus the global change. Right now, this is the global change. Well, if I use the gradient mask, this now is going to be a um, a local change. There we go. Okay. And the red is going to show me where the mask is. Just a little bit. There we go. I'll go to an extreme so you can see it. There. So that lower half is being affected and nothing else is. There we go. Now, keep in mind, because you guys are a Photoshop group, I'm going against our, our philosophy. Um, at Skylum, if I have to do what I just did, that meant I'm doing I'm doing major creative changes because the goal is to use AI. Click, click, click. I'm done. Go to the next one. But be, because we're turning this into a piece of art, now I'm taking extra time, and I'm using that gradient tool. I can still make I still can create a um, a template from this. I'll just have to adjust this part on the next image. Next, what I want to do is add texture. And I'm going to load a texture. Um, let's see. Instead of trying to pick all of the. So the scarf that she's wearing, um, is there like a metal wire in there? Nope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so to get to get that, it took <laughs> that poor girl. She she was phenomenal. Uh, my buddy um, Neil had to throw the scarf up in the air, and after like maybe fifteen tries, we got it extremely close to where I wanted it. And then of course, you know, I, I tweaked it a little bit. I swear we were on. I'm on my C drive, photography. Here we go, and your club. There we go. And here is um, a group of textures I combined together. Now, when it comes in, it makes everything the opacity of 50%. I'm going to crank it up to 100. So this is what we're actually seeing. However, what I want to do is desaturate this so it's black and white. And let's make it a little bit brighter. Good. Now I'm going to change the, the blend mode. 
and I'm going to experiment to see typically which one is going to look best. Overlay looks really good. Ooh, so I like overlay. Now I can dial back the opacity. So here's zero. But I'm going to bring it in right about here. All right. Now that I have that set, I'm going to use my brush, the layer mat. I'm going to mask it, erase at 100% opacity all on her face. And I want to re-erase here on her skin. There we go. Mm. So now I applied the mask here. Um, let's see. This is still just a little... A little too intense for me. There. Let's see. Oh, soft light. All right. So I did soft light and bring it up just a little bit more. There we go. All right. So it's there and it's subtle. So it's not over the top. Now I have it. Now, here's the bottom part. This this control controls every one of our tools that we just used. So it controls all of them. So when I apply a change to this, it'll take, let's say, one tool is at 40%, another tool is at 60%, another tool is at 100%. It's going to take all of them down. Whatever I put here, let's say I go to 80%. It'll make that it'll make that tool that was at 100 percent it'll drop it down to 80 percent that tool that well, I'm not going to do math today 70 um, percent it'll bring it down to what 56 percent you see what I mean so so this is an extremely useful tool and you, well you know this as as artists you get into developing something and then the next morning you look at it and go what the frick was I thinking I way over edited this. You know, this right here is that, that, oh, God, help me tool. You know, and you bring it back down between 50 to 70%. And now that to me, I like how it looks. Here's before. Here's after. Oh, you know what? I don't have my actual. Yep. So we have it all set. And now what's really cool is if we apply no. that same technique I showed you earlier with the football, with the uh, wrestlers, I can have a different aviator in each of these scenes. I can make each aviator have the same identical look and feel, but a different subject. So that, that's why it's so powerful to use Photoshop with a, a project like this, because then you can actually um, create a consistency all the way through. All right. How's that? Nice. I love how you did it. Nice. Oh man. Be like you know what I was looking for. I, I did. I, I, I did have. I did have a question, and I and I hope it's not gonna spin you out of control. <laughs> so I, lo I love the how you um, uh, collapsed all those portrait uh, uh, adjustments you made to her face into a into a template, and I could see where. You might uh, sometimes want to have a template that has textures and skies and stuff in it. And you might have a, a bunch of different templates that you want to apply and turn off and on selectively and have the AI figure out where it's going to go. Um, is there an easy way to do that? Interesting. So, okay, so I'm glad you mentioned that. By the way, notice down here how, how I moved that down to 70%. I, what I should have done is I, I should have resaved this, which now, when I resave it, from now on, all that when I apply that template, it'll be exactly a seventy percent, even though it shows one hundred. All right. So you over you overwrote the the original. Well, I didn't overwrite it. No, it oh, it created a separate template. Exactly. So if we look at the templates, so to answer your question about what we were saying, look, look at all my my templates. Holy crap! So, and a lot of these were brought over automatically. So I can go through and I can delete some of these. They were automatically brought over when we installed some of the beta. But if you notice, 
the, the regular templates that we have, as of right now, these are all in categories. Now, I learned how to do this, which is really cool. So you can make a category like this, and when you click on it, it'll have all of your, <clears throat> let's say, like you just said, Kevin, um, you have one for textures. Well, if you had seven textures, you could actually put it, we can actually put it into a category, and here it is, as of now. Okay. The user can't do that yet. I'm hoping, so, I'm hoping yeah. we can. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pitching hard for that, uh, yeah. by the um, way. I have an idea I'll talk to you about later. But the neat thing about that is just come over here to your collection and start favoring them. Sure, so sure, sure. So, so them, my, my question was actually uh, taking the same image. And let's say I've got a four or five oh. or six or ten step process. And each step of the process is actually a template. Can I go in and say... Process one, process four, seven, and nine. You know, and and uh, and, and and do it within on the same image. Yeah, that would have been nice, but no, because okay, so right you'd now, have to do it. You'd have to do it in Photoshop and use the layers that way. Exactly. So you see what we're doing right here, right? So all the work we just did to this image. If I were to come over and apply a different um, template to it, now yep. all that all that's gone. Right. Okay. So Got it. That's what I thought. The only way to bring it back, thank God, is the is history. Come the history tool, and on the history tool, just back up one. Yep. But here's a catch, which is pretty neat. If, come on, if I come all the way to the bottom, down here to the original, I click on the original, and now I make a new change. Let's say, um, well, the template we just did. That template, well, hello. Mm -hmm. Now when I come back to the history tool, notice it overwrote the history. Right. So the history tool picks up right where it left off. So if it's here, any changes from now on will automatically be here. Gotcha. All okay, right. good. All right, thanks. So no questions yet. I just see a comment from Mandala says he's jealous that that Mandala is jealous of me because uh, he needs to get his hair cut before the barbershop's close. <laughs> so what are you trying to say? Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you and I, hair. you and I are in style. Is what he's yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Don't make fun. I know. Of all right. I, mean, I tell you what, the first time I shaved my head, I had a headache because I thought people were gonna make fun of me. I got more I got more recognition and more respect. Because I did, nice. did people rub your head? Yes. Then same with me. Do they recognize I'm, I'm I'm that type of person that's not gonna slap on slap on side the head? Yep. <laughs> I, I walked into Best Buy. Good. Okay, I walked into Best Buy and the first thing um, the people I knew, they oh my God, they all ran over and started they rubbing my head. head. <laughs> and, 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 like, and like the young Asian, the older Asian ladies come over and rub my belly. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time? <laughs> no, at the same time. <laughs> so, That's funny. So I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, man. And by the way, what I wanted to show you guys is I have this on my credit card. This okay. Is image. This, oh, really? Oh, oh wow. Wow. Oh, cool. Oh, I nice. have this image on my credit card, and I also have Exciting. this how, how image get, on my credit card. Oh, that's cool. So how do you get your images on your credit card? Um, Wells Fargo has it. Free oh, of really? Okay. So right. I do this because my my friend here passed away, and Eric Egley, you guys remember Eric Egley? Oh, Eric the, did this? Did this. He's oh, actually nice. did this, this photo. Um, and so out of out of and this is his son, who's one of my black belts. So okay. I always, I have this with the carry with me. And it's funny when I pay for something, people will look, look at me, look again. And I'll say, that was my, that's my identical twin brother. But he died at birth. <laughs> but he died at birth. <laughs> it's my identical twin brother. Um, but he died at birth. And this is my way of showing him recognition. Oh, okay. What? 
Wait. <laughs> I'm gonna say, it makes you look like a mob boss so you think you have money. Yeah, that's true too. Do you believe I get to work with these guys? Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. You can make this stuff up, Steve. But, but this is like more fun than working at Nick when you're with them, isn't it? Well, I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is yes. Like over a over an internet recorded. Uh, video. <laughs> and didn't we share an Airbnb, Kevin? <laughs> Kevin is like Vanelli. That must have been fun. In the morning. <laughs> I can, I can imagine. I can imagine. Sharing, I can imagine sharing a room with Vanelli because he's pretty fun. But Kevin's kind. He's real serious. Um, like, more serious he's than than what, he's, what, what he's leaving off is that that I put him in the other side of the room with a guy named Levi. <laughs> yeah, he was in a different room and. <laughs> That's photo photo plus expo last year. Yeah, poor, poor Levi, Stephen. <laughs> Levi, Levi. Mm -hmm. what? Oh, good, you're up. Listen, <laughs> he's funny. Now that you're up, let's work on some of these projects. <laughs> That's good guy. Oh God. All right, Angela, what do you have? Angela, you All right. Have tag team. I've got another sky replacement for you. Cool. So this one was captured, uh, let's see here, back in 2008 also when I lived in Sicily. And oh, wow. I was just getting into photography while I lived there. So a lot of my pictures are just snapshots. And what I love is going back, since I can't go travel back to Sicily right now, now that I have better gear and I know, you know a thing or two more about taking pictures, I, ha I can go back to these pictures and take them into Luminar, add a different sky, completely change the mood and kind of, you know, relive it again. So what I'm gonna do with this one is change this to a subtle sunset, add a different sky, and just completely change the mood. So I'm gonna go down to export. So, so you're gonna change the lighting of the building to match the lighting of the sunset? Yep. Yay. Wow. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. All right. Are, are there any whales swimming through the sky in Sicily this time of year? I'm looking no, no, no whales in the sky that time of year. <laughs> <laughs> we could get crazy and put in some like lightning or something. All right. Oh. So let's go over here to edit. We'll do a couple of quick things here. We'll do our enhance AI just a little bit. We'll add some structure just to give those buildings a little bit more definition, bring out some of the details here on the sides and the shadows. And then we'll immediately go ahead and pop over to creative and into sky AI. So I'm going to go down to i think it was this one here and this is one of the california sunsets package that's available on our websites so on the skyland website in the marketplace we have a lot of different sky packs so even though i really highly recommend people take their own sky images when they're out and they see a beautiful a beautiful sky keep those images and catalog them but if you're just starting out with sky replacements you might not have a collection yet so you can go buy some of these collections and they've got some really beautiful images in them so in looking at this image, we have light coming in from the right side, but our buildings are all lit on the left. So it doesn't match very well as is. So if I go into the advanced settings, I can flip the sky. So now the light is coming in roughly the right direction. Now we have a lot of pinks and stuff going on in the sky. The lighting on the buildings doesn't really match. So we have this handy relight scene slider. And we can go ahead and pull that up and that changes the tones of the buildings to match the color of the light. We can then go ahead and adjust the temperature of the sky. We can warm it up a little bit, and cool it off. I think that looked pretty good actually right where it was. And we can pull that exposure down if we wanna make it a little bit more foreboding, brighten it up, even add a little bit of atmospheric haze. I don't really think that needs it either. So right there I think looks really good. So we can turn that off and turn that back on again and you see it completely changes the mood of the mood of the image overall. Now I'll get a little bit more creative with this and I'm gonna go down to Mystical. You've seen me use this a few times today, you know I really like this tool. So I'm gonna pull that up and that's gonna start to just soften a lot of the edges. It doesn't lose detail, but it softens the light a little bit and kind of feels like it makes everything come together a little bit better, especially with that glow on the building right there. And then we can go ahead and go into colorize, warm up that light a little bit. And that just makes it feel even more late afternoon. It's got that glow. It's like the light's just coming in from the left and hitting those buildings. And you're getting that late in the day glow. So 
that's really all I would do to this image creatively. To finish it off, I'd go to Essentials and add a vignette. We can go ahead and pull that amount slider all the way down. I'll go into my advanced settings and grab that feather. I might make the size a tiny bit smaller and click on choose subject, Oops. choose subject, and move that over a little bit to the right. So the center of the vignette is right over the, the dome, the Duomo that is really the center point of that town. So I'll go ahead and click on choose subject again to deactivate that and then pull back my mount slider and just be able to really bring the viewer's eye right into that centerpiece of the city. We can even add a little bit of inner light if we wanna open that up a little bit more. And there we have it. I've taken a daytime snapshot, made it feel wow. like it's late in the day. And in just, I mean, it was really a quick edit. So it's a fun way to go back and revisit some of your older photos that you might not have been there at the right time of day, but you can still make something really cool out of it. Oh, it's nice. So, Great Boy, job. After. Nice. Yeah. And then you'll throw that into the gallery template and put your name on the bottom and where that is. That would be very cool. So this is in a, a town called Piazza Amarina in Sicily. Um, kind of it's like inland part of it, um, southeast side of Sicily. How long were you there? Four years. Oh, wow. So you speak Italian? A little bit. Here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> I speak a little bit, but I mean, we, we lived, my husband's military, so we lived in what I call Little America. We were in military housing surrounded by a bunch of other Americans. So I'm pretty fluent at shopping and eating out and things like that. But conversational, I'm, I'm pretty rusty and I'm, I'm 10 years out of practice now. So the, the food is good there, isn't it? Oh my gosh, the best. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a love you already established, she speaks better Italian than me. <laughs> wow. I don't speak Italian at all. <laughs> but, but Angela, that, 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 that image is perfect, like you said, for the gallery. And mm -hmm. then give that to your mom for Christmas. I could. But oh, you but just now you already it told her you can't. Oh, well, yeah, she's already here. Now she knows. Except she's here and she saw uh, it. We blew it. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> I do think she might have been with me the day that I took that, though. Oh, that'd be even better then. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your mom it was between that and the 7200 2.8 millimeter lens you were going to buy her. So I, I think she'd appreciate this more. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, that's really nice because when I go in my photo shoots, I leave my family at home. <laughs> well, you know, my, traveling with my mom is actually, is we have a lot of fun. And yeah. it's, it's so great to travel with other photographers because they don't mind if you stop every five feet to take a picture because they're yeah. doing the same thing. Yeah, and the only, only problem is when you go, well, what are you taking a picture of? Well, and then they come and they stand right next to you and take the same picture. And it's like, what the heck? Or, or, or they say, why are you taking so many pictures? Like, We're done. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <Really? laughs> look at the Grand Canyon. Oh, that's nice. All right. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to have to get your mom to go on my next Death Valley class. Well, we'll work on it. Okay. <laughs> April 15th. All <laughs> right. So... Your photo for Christmas or Death Valley? For I think she wants your photo. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely Death Valley. <laughs> All right. So All right. Vanelli is uh, next, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I have Vanelli another one. Okay. Um, Boom. So this is a movie poster we created. Uh, you you saw the TV series on Netflix, the Crown series. Love that series. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's what inspired me to create this. Um. And I wish I, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, and believe it or not, let's see, uh, creating it is an extremely simple. Let's see. Um, let's see. And, and creating it is a very, very simple, um, a simple setup. But of course, I don't have it right in front of me. I apologize. So I'll come back to it. I'll find it for you, and I'll show you. All it is is one light, but one strip box right here in front of her, and a reflector behind her. That's all it is. Um, after weeks of prep, after weeks of trimming it down from five lights down to one light with a reflector, I was so excited. So this is what it's going to look like originally. This is the NEF version, and this is what we're going to turn it into. All right, so here we are with the raw version 
And notice, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna jump right into the edit, the edit tab. And from the edit tab, I'll click the portrait tab to pull up the portrait tools. What's really cool about this, it's a side profile. And watch this. Look at that, it still recognizes that's the face. It still recognizes that, uh, I'm sorry, the eyes. It's still, it's still gonna recognize these are the eyes. Even though there's only one eye in the scene, it's gonna recognize the eye, any dark patches under the eyes that will remove it, enhance the eyebrow. Now, what's really cool about all this is the engineers made all of this self-learning to where when it first came out, it couldn't recognize side portraits like this or a portrait, um, a side profile. It couldn't recognize it. So they taught AI how to recognize a side profile photo like this. So that I thought was really, really cool. So now that I enhance the eyes, I'm gonna quickly enhance the skin. I'm gonna go overboard. And let's see, any remove any skin defects? No, we had a makeup artist on set, so we're kind of fine with it. So I'll leave it. So I have the set. Here's before. Here's after. Now, what I want to do is fine tune a few things. Number one, I'm going to come to the dodge and burn tool, and I want to lighten. Just this, um, just the, the earring. I'm going to go at 100% strength. And I'm going to paint just on the earring itself. That's nice. There it is. And if I've gone too far, he said it looks a little, a little too aggressive. Well, I can come back and dial down the strength. I'm sorry. I can come back, and click erase. Dial down the strength, and then just come over the, over it a couple times, and now I dialed it back down. So that looks pretty good. All right, um, the area is right in here. I want to darken. Well, what better way? Let me come back up to vignette, and I'm going to choose her. Bring it way down. Right about here. There we go. And I like how all this is looking. Ready for this? Black and white. Convert. Now I convert it to a black and white. And what's best about all of this is I can do it in any order. I don't need to do it in the order you just saw me that I did. So I just convert it to black and white. Now I'm going to come back in. And just bring back some just the reds because typically the reds are in the skin tones and of course your lipstick and there we have it nice. before after so it's it's doing a color correction for me and i can I, I can dictate how much i want it to to apply let me see that right there i like it and then once i have it all set at this point, I can export it as a TIFF or whatever I want, and then open it up in Photoshop to create um, the gallery here. Or I can just start in Photoshop, like we did earlier, and bring it over. Now, if you noticed, let me do before and after. I don't know how this happened. I don't know how it got by me. Look at her crown for a moment. Watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide the effect there's like a, um, a magenta tone to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I applied the black and white filter, it got rid of all of that and gave me what I was looking for. Wow. So That's a great tip. This, that's, that's a great use of selective color uh, on that skin tone. Exactly. Yeah, this, it worked beautifully. And, and this, the Duchess of York, um, this is actually a, an Adobe Illustrator file so you could change whatever you want. Like I do film by Alec Vanelli, my son. <laughs> um, her name is Lauren Longoriarty. So of course she's the Duchess of York. Let's see, uh, 
Oh, the Media Factory, which is Rich Harrington's company. Um, music by The Prince and I. So, and when I went through her Facebook page, these are all of her friends. So I just went through and put her friends' names in each of these spots. So now she has this printed. Um, I believe it's two foot by three foot. So it looks like a movie poster that she hangs, you know, that she can hang in her, in her house. And when her friends come to visit, they actually will go to the duchessofyork.com. <laughs> That's real. Smart. Um, but it's neat because you can make it look so realistic that, that they can't tell. That's nice. so cool. Nice. So Ivy Wizard says he votes to give her googly eyes in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Cracks me up though. Oh, your your group is killing me. <laughs> All right. And yeah. Actually, guess what, guys? Um I believe I did find it. Talking about the lighting setup? The lighting diagram? Um, yeah, scratch that. <laughs> uh, I, I found a, I found an old tweet about it, but I don't know why I didn't link to... I'm shocked I didn't link it to the actual article. Oh, I was going to put the... Uh, I was going to put the link to the article. Oh, you have it? Oh, perfect. Yeah, hang on. Let, let me make sure I've got it. And actually, am I still, still sharing my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's right here. Oh yeah, okay, that's all it's gonna give. So no, no, this is the set. Look what she's wearing. <laughs> and what's funny is this is Miss um, Mrs. Florida. So she won the beauty pageant here, and she's won God knows how many beauty pageants. But she's just absolutely amazing to work with. And actually, Steve, if you were at Photoshop World in Orlando, she was one of the models that were there. Oh, okay. No, the Photoshop worlds I've been lately were either in Las Vegas or um, over in um, Boston. Yep. Oh, that was years ago. Yeah. But yeah, but look at this. Just, I mean, again, it was that old attitude. Um, when something is too complicated, try to find the, the fastest and most proficient way of doing something. And I couldn't believe that we actually narrowed it down to just one light and a reflector. Yeah. And and, and this stuff here cost under 30 bucks. You know, it's amazing what you can do with just one light and a reflector. You can do a hell of a lot. Yeah. And thanks, Kevin, for getting that for everyone. Yeah. All right. Well, there's a question in the in the chat. Um, what, they want to know if there's a release date for Luminar AI, and Kevin just posted it. Uh, December 15 is the magic day. So, yes, <laughs> yes, coming up soon, very very soon. And that was by Jay Pryor. Hey man, welcome. So right right as we release it, Angela and I are doing our coffee break series in the morning, mm -hmm. and as soon as we get done. I hop on a plane to Egypt to meet up with the team. Cool. So Angela will be holding down the fort. And Angela, are you excited that Rich Harrington volunteered to help out? <laughs> well, he, could, he totally could help. It was like, he was saying something about babysitting. I was like, I don't need a babysitter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it was funny. It was funny that he jumped in. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> you never volunteered to help with me. <laughs> Angela, Angela. It's always about Angela. <laughs> Angela's fun. Thank you. She's the fun one. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, guys, If uh, I, I don't know how uh, if you have some other images just to show, but uh, I'd be happy to spend the last uh, couple of minutes of the yeah, I was here gonna... walking through the website and showing people where they could get more information. Yeah, we got 10 minutes left. So if you want to do that, it might not be a bad idea. Yeah, go okay. for any it. Final, any, any final thoughts, Vanelli or, or uh, Angela? Before no, I, I, my final thought is if you're debating on do you need to get it, it's one of those questions. Will it save you time? Will it jumpstart your creativity? 
And Kevin will say, tell you how much it's cost. Um, it's not that expensive at all. If it'll jumpstart your creativity and make your life easier and make things faster, it's a no-brainer. You know, if you're, um, you know, if you're a photographer that's been around for a long time, it's something you definitely have to put in your in your uh, tool chest. True. True. Exactly. Well, let's. Uh, hey, Steve, if you want to share my screen, I'll yeah, uh, absolutely do a little tour here. Tell me when you got it up. Is that yep. okay? Rock and roll. All right. So. Um, First and foremost, uh, you guys should know that uh, that Luminar 4 will continue to be sold and supported. Uh, we we know that uh, that we're taking a little bit different approach to photo editing, so we wanted to keep our traditional photo editor uh, that has layers and brushes and masks and things like that uh, in the marketplace. Um, and and uh, and Luminar AI is a it's a one-time purchase. It's a brand new product. Somebody uh, earlier asked if it was a subscription, and it's not. It's a perpetual license. Uh, currently, there is a, a discount uh, for anybody that owns a previous product of ours, whether that's Luminar or Aurora. Uh, and uh, if you don't, it's it's currently on kind of a pre-order price right now. And uh, Steve, to your to your discount code, uh, I want to set the record straight. Um, there are no affiliate discount codes on top of the discounts that we already have in place for the pre-order. So once the product ships, those discount codes uh, like STPUG will kick into gear. But uh, but for now, it's already at a at a great price. And um, we also uh, decided to sell it um, uh, with a one seat purchase option or a two seat purchase option. So I'll, I'll share that stuff here in a second. So let's. Let's look at this uh, at this pre-order special price. So if you click on if you click on buy, you'll see what our current uh, our current pricing is. So right now we do have a a one seat uh, a one seat version. This price is for people who already own uh, Luminar or Aurora. Uh, you can also Angela mentioned earlier that we do sell some add-ons. I'll show those in a second. Uh, so you can also bundle Luminar with uh, with uh, the, the you know, skies or, or other textures or things like that. So if we just kind of scroll through the, the web page here, this is our Luminar AI uh, page. We've got some nice videos uh, that you can watch, although I, I, I would suspect that you, you, you got the better, <laughs> the better live demo here <laughs> with these guys. Uh, but there's just so many AI-powered tools in here. Today you saw atmosphere, structure, sky, uh, you saw a little bit of composition AI, uh, just so much stuff going on. Uh, I don't think we mm -hmm. saw Iris, but that's a, a fantastic tool for actually, you know, uh, changing colors. Um, one of the things that we're, we're looking to bring out in 2021 is called Boca AI. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of fun. So let me go ahead and click on the link here to show you, um, our, our main page, as I said, we're going to keep Luminar 4 in the uh, in the mix here. Uh, I'll scroll down to our marketplace, and this is where we sell all of our all of our add-ons. So here are the the sky packs that we have, and uh, you see there's a number of them, and these a lot of these are created by by people around the world, all pro photographers in their own right. Uh, Bastian Werner, I, I met him in Germany a couple of years ago at um, the last uh, Photokina, and he's he's a just balls to the wall storm chaser kind of guy. Super cool. Um, uh, hope that didn't offend anybody, by the way. Um, but just just a terrific guy. Just goes right into the belly of the beast. Uh, here's some sunsets by Elia Lacardi, very renowned uh, travel photographer, uh, etc. So. Uh, Sky collections, you know, they come in and, and they have various numbers of skies and some of them uh, have, you know, 10 or 15 or 20. Um, we also have these things called looks. Looks are uh, the Luminar 4 equivalent of templates. So as Luminar AI ships, you'll see a bunch of these things take on. Uh, they're either being recast as templates or you'll see a little note up here at the uh, that says they're available for Luminar 4 or Luminar AI. So Bakuthelio made a comment. He says he entered his previous code for Aurora 
but the system did not recognize his email and or license, although your support page does. Um, okay. I did send a message through support on this. Um, that, that's exactly what I was going to recommend. So, so uh, it sounds like the the ecom page uh, didn't recognize the the license code, but when he went to our customer service and support okay. page and put it in, um, he, it, it does show that he's a he's a current owner. I would just say send a message to support; they'll take care all, of it. All right. Then RJSD says, uh, "Will there be a pet? Will there be patch updates to the suite if there are bugs?" or new features, um, yeah. or will there be new versions we will have to purchase? So our policy uh, for years has been that we have these uh, these major releases uh, that are that are usually annual or every 15 uh, months. Um, and But in between, there's a series of free updates to owners. So if you buy the software today, you'll get some of these new features, like, uh, like I mentioned, Boca AI is going to be new. Okay. Um, we're also looking at a, a revised or an upgraded uh, version of the sky replacement that will be better suited for, for doing reflections on water. It's, it's the technology is just super cool. We couldn't finish it up for, you know, Luminar AI, the release coming in, in, in a week or so, uh, or 10 days, but, uh, but we will release that for free later on in, in 2021. So there'll be support for new cameras, support for uh, any operating systems, uh, and we'll, ha we'll slipstream in some new features uh, along the way. Uh, and usually that, you know, uh, well, historically that's been uh, absolutely free to current users. I I'm, looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the question about the FAQ and right. support for the new Apple Silicon. Um, I am, uh, I I'm not sure how to answer that. I don't think we've made any pronouncements. Um, I don't know that any of the developers uh, over in over in Ukraine have a Apple Silicon machine yet. Um, I volunteered to buy one for them and test it oh. myself, but uh, that, that was, uh, that was oh, so this I didn't get an answer on Slack. I, they're ignoring me for some reason. And it's referring it's referring to that new Apple machine with the, with their with their uh, yeah the Apple processor. Silicon. Yeah, I know yeah, Photoshop that's what I think works, well, Photoshop works with it, but some things won't work as fast as they should in Photoshop. It's the latest I heard. Well, and, and, and the double click on that question, which I think is really uh, smart, is, you know, there's there's going to be an emulation mode, uh, right. just like we had when we went from the Motorola chips to the to the <laughs> Intel chips. Uh, but, but native supports, uh, you know, probably another matter. Um, I, I have heard that um, through the forums and whatnot that there a couple of people are running it. Um, running Luminar 4 using Rosetta. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the emulator for the previous versions mm -hmm. and that it's it's running fine. Um, okay. And then the official word from the support team is that support for the new chipset is coming. Um, we've got a long history of developing for Max and we're committed to making sure that we have full support, but we don't have an ETA quite yet. Right, okay, good, good. You, you, usually, Big changes happen fast when the engineers feel pain. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I'll give you a pointed example. When uh, when uh, two of our, our lead engineers uh, picked up a new Fuji X series camera, yeah. and we found out that our X Trans ra uh, raw file support wasn't up to snuff, that got fixed pretty quickly. <laughs> they couldn't edit their own uh, raw files in, in the software, so that was fixed fast. Um, so, um, as Angela said, you know, we're aware of it. We'll work on it. We're Mac fans through and through. We, we bleed rainbow. So it'll, it, it'll, it'll happen uh, <laughs> as soon as we can make it happen. So uh, I, I be Wizard made a comment about from watching the videos, the new M1 uh, chip runs older software fine, but runs the newer software even better. Um, cool. Actually, Baku Thilo just made a comment that he's confident mm -hmm. that you will support mm -hmm. it. Just wondering if there was an update, you know. Yeah, I, I, I suspect once we, you know, the engineers right now are, um, are you know, completely slammed and burned the midnight oil, uh, putting the fall, uh, finishing touches on Luminar AI. So once they uh, co come out from a, a nice, well-deserved sleep, they go to I Egypt and, and are regaled with stories of, of from Vanelli for a while. They'll come back rested and take a look at this stuff. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, let me keep running through a few things because I know we're we're towards the end here. I just want to point out that we have um, one of the things that we didn't show you today was our augmented sky, AI augmented sky uh, features. And so these are objects that you can add to um, that you can add to your skies. So uh, nice. here's an example of some clouds and and the AI is able to detect as with our sky uh, tool where objects are that it should be behind or in front of. And so you can do some pretty cool, uh, pr pretty cool imagery with stuff like this. Uh, so that's, uh, that's fun. Um, uh, it's good fun stuff. And it's a, it's one of the features that is actually in Luminar 4 and Luminar AI. Um, let's see, got some textures, lookup tables, great way to, to apply, um, you know, color grading and, and, and doing some other, uh, cinematic type effects, filmic effects on your images um, pretty quickly. Hey, I want to I want to also show you uh, a little bit about our Luminar X membership. Now, this is actually it, it is a subscription uh, uh, style membership, and it's really for people who want to get some uh, exclusive, continuous uh, uh, education, exclusive looks sky textures and, and those sorts of things. You also uh, uh, get discounts. Um, it's on special right now. We just actually launched this uh, about a month ago. So it's on special right now for, for five bucks a month. So that's our Luminar X membership. One of my favorite people over in Kiev, a woman named uh, Julie, Juliana Chizhova uh, runs this and she's super creative and, and oh. I know that she's going to be um, keeping the pedal to the metal with, with new, um, you know, new add-ons and and uh, and perks for being a part of that. So, IB Wizard has a great question: Is is there going to be a way a, or a marketplace for people to actually post their own creations so, so that you guys can use it in your program as the background? Well, you are a smart person. <laughs> Whoever asked, I don't know who IB Wizard is, but that's great. You know. Um, we, you know, today, if uh, we work with a lot of influencers and ambassadors and we and these collections are, are sort of hand curated and, and quality checked by the by the team uh, before they're released. And, and usually there's a, a nice, you know, uh, arrangement with the with the artist or the contributor uh, that's mutually beneficial. Um, we have we have examples of many people who have made uh, looks and and other uh, LUT packages and things like that available for Luminar owners that aren't even sold on our site. So uh, you'll 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 find those throughout you know throughout the web if you search for them. I know what you're asking though. It, is there a way that uh, we can enable users to quickly make their own template packages and sell them on our marketplace? Uh, that's um, on the Skyla marketplace, and that's something that I, that we've definitely been talking about. Um, as the uh, as the sole business development representative in in the U.S., uh, this is a, a drum I've been beating for quite some time. I think it would be terrific to open yeah. up the platform that way. Um, just kind of not speaking out of turn here, but but it's it's not just a tech it's not just a tech um, discussion, but it's also kind of a business and process workflow discussion on our part where, you know, even though we've got uh, seemingly a lot of people, um, uh, there's not, I think if we, we just have to be careful about opening things uh, up like that and, and, um, and the challenges that come with sustaining that sort of stuff. That makes any sense. So great question though. And I, I love the spirit. <laughs> uh, great. So, so our photo academy is something that we we really kicked into gear um, uh, at the start of the COVID. Uh, we had planned a 50 city tour through the U.S. with uh, Fujifilm and and Smug Mug Flickr and a couple of other partners, and uh, that tour was supposed to uh, kick off March 10th. <laughs> so um, we took a, a, a wiser path and rediverted those funds and. And those, those really, those that partner expertise, and and uh, leaned into something called the the Photo Academy. And these are free; these are free resources on, um, you know, on the the on the site. As you as you click through these, you'll get to different tutorials uh, that we built. Um, some of them are are you know how to create your own looks, 
how to build your own sky replacement library. These are these are great things, and I, and I can guarantee that some of these have been done by Benelli and and uh, and uh, Angela. Sure, certainly, you'll see these coffee breaks. So these coffee breaks are really their um, their baby. I don't know if you guys want to say anything about these, but they happen twice a day, and they're all being recorded and and put on the put on the page. And here's how you access them. And Pixel Grabber has a question: Is Aurora HDR still being update, up, updated or developed? You know that is uh, that's a great question. I don't have a, a clear answer on that. Um, my uh, my take on it is we feel pretty good about where Aurora HDR is right now in terms of its capability and competitiveness in the marketplace. Um, the team has, pr uh, you know, from top. It's not like we have an Aurora team. And a Luminar team. So uh, these are the same engineers, largely working on this, uh, working on these products. So really, the past, you know, nine months to a year have uh, the entire team has been focused on on Luminar AI. Um, so I think once that project uh, is out, we'll we'll take another look at, at where Aurora HDR is. If if you do, uh, I put my email address in the in the Twitch stream earlier. If you do have some suggestions on where you'd like uh, to see improvements in Aurora HDR, feel free to send them my way, and I'll make sure the the, the team gets them. Um, I usually send those things right to the chief product officer of the company who plans all of our products. It is worth mentioning with Aurora HDR that it did just get updated for Big Sur support, so it's definitely not oh, being funded. Um, yep, like Kevin said, we're, we're pretty happy with where it is. Um, I know some people are asking for some new camera support, and I think that's definitely being considered. But we're still selling it, um, and we're still supporting it. So, Yeah, great, 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 great. Um, so one of the other things we did with uh, um, sort of as COVID hit, and we, we kind of kind of turned our, our attention to, to live shows and, and much more educational content is uh, we created a, a podcast. It's called Behind the Scene. You can pick it up on uh, iTunes and and it's um, it's it's hosted by a fellow named Frederick Van Johnson who has done a lot of, uh, he, he's got his own uh, podcast called This Week in Photo and great interviewer, uh, has, usually has great um uh, guests on on board, and uh, look at all the places <laughs> you can you can take a look at it. So it looks like wherever you take in your podcast, you can you can pick this up. So it usually covers some great topics. It's a very you know informal conversation with uh, whatever artist he's he's uh, you know bringing to light. Uh, so uh, we talked about coffee breaks. We talked about behind the scene. We talked about the photo academy. We talked about Luminar uh, X. Uh, add-ons and subscription membership. There's just a ton of uh, ton of great resources out there. Uh, our YouTube channel and and Facebook uh, communities are very active. Uh, one thing I did want to share with you, and uh, I want to make sure. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, let's see. Ah, uh, uh, here we go. So, um, one of the cool things coming up on December 10th is uh, a 90-minute, uh, basically a keynote broadcast for Luminar AI. And it's uh, it's going to be at 10 a.m. EST. So you can go to, if you look at this URL here, I'll copy it into the Twitch stream too. But it's uh, skyland.com uh, slash Luminar dash live. Let me just pop that in here real quick. There you go. And it's it's really going to be a fun event. Um, a lot of people have been working on this pretty pretty hard over the last um, last few weeks. Uh, Lila Cardi again, nice travel photographer, really well known. Rich Harrington, who's our uh, chief evangelist, our CEO Alex, uh, Victor Hoff from Fuji, uh, Benjamin Jaworski is a great uh, landscape photographer from uh, from Germany. Peter Daring is the CEO of Peak Design. Uh, uh, Layla uh, Bahrain is a documentarian photographer. Alistair, uh, he's our, the global partnerships guy for, for Fujifilm, I mean, uh, Smug Mug and Flickr. So uh, it's going to be a fantastic event. I urge you all to get on to Luminar Live and, uh, you know, sort of copy that into your calendar. Uh, it's a little bit early our time, 7 a.m. our time, um, but it'll last for 90 minutes. and. 
the agenda is going to be going to include a mixture of some keynote and also some uh, some tutorials. So we're going to be going through, you know, portrait editing, more landscape workflows, um, and then we'll have a panel discussion to kind of wrap things up about the impact of photography on uh, digital storytelling and social media. So, pretty pretty um, uh, excited about this event. Angela Vanelli, you have uh, any comments on in terms of touring through the website or other resources where people can find out? Well, Luminar well, Insiders. covered it pretty well. Ah, great, Luminar Insiders. So anybody who buys, um, let me see if I can, uh, I don't know, should I bring this up? <laughs> um, but a a anybody who uh, buys uh, Luminar AI will be invited to an exclusive insiders community. And through the pre-order process, folks, we've been um, using it as a platform to share ongoing development information, beta notes, give private demos uh, to people, and really kind of keep them up to speed on how the development progression has been. Um, so the insiders community is a, is, a, is a great thing. And so when you uh, purchase Luminar AI, as part of that fulfillment email, you'll be invited into the insiders community. And uh, we've just been blown away by the amount of engagement, the intelligent questions, the images that we've seen. It's, uh, it's really surprised us um, and delighted us. Uh, so uh, thanks for bringing up the insiders. All right. So uh, Stephen, why don't yes, you uh, why don't you lead us off into the sunset here, man? All right. <laughs> We're in southern, sunny Southern California, so they will not be in the sunset for quite some time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, okay, so we're going to do a we're going to do a few giveaways today. Cool. We will be giving away uh, Skylum software, and uh, we will be giving away a one-year subscription to the Creative Cloud. And I figured I might go ahead since this, since this is our last meeting of the year. I'll also give away one of my five-week Photoshop workshops. We have three. Wow. Nice. Ooh, these wow. maybe. <laughs> wow. So we have three things to give away. So um, how about if we start with uh, uh, Skylum Software? What would you like to give away? Well, I yeah. think we'd be fools if we didn't give away a copy of Luminar AI. <laughs> OK, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So here's the deal, guys. I just put a number. Actually, I'm going to start sharing my screen here. Um, I just put a number um, inside of a notepad. And from 1 to 100, so what i like everybody to do is to type in a number inside your chat box. From 1 to 100, the person that gets the closest to it would get a copy of our AI. Very cool. Now you got to show us your hands, though, so we know you're not changing the number well, well, <laughs> while they're typing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm already done. The number's already in. Oh, I know that. I just so if, I, if I do anything, <laughs> I'm busted. <laughs> oh, <hands up. laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. Hey, 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 Skylum folks, do you think we ought to give a uh, copy of Aurora? Oh, oh, that'd be I'm, awesome. I was going to say, oh, I, have oh, I have a copy of Aurora. Well, let's let's make a second. Uh, this is working oh, so okay. well. Let's make a second one if you want. So, so two pieces of software Hi. from Skylum. All right. So people are still typing their number in there. Okay, I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm looking at my number, and is it everybody done? Okay, all right. Looks like it looks like um, <laughs> nothing. I have my hand wizard. On the mouse. Wizard, that's great. <laughs> Other hand is up here. Other hands on the mouse. Okay, all right. So, it, oh wow, I think we've got one. We've got a winner. A winner, pixel grabber. Um, all right. right, let's see it. Okay, pixel <laughs> grabber. That's close. That's that's fantastic. And what was your number? Oh, it's repeat my screen. Oh, my screen is oh, you're talking about my screen is repeating. Oh. Somebody says my screen. Oh, I guess is my screen repeating. 
Yeah, it is. That's because since this, I guess, not, and I'm not sharing my screen, um, um, Baku Thelia. What it is is I'm showing the Twitch stream. Yeah. So if I simply just turn off the Twitch stream like that, now you don't <laughs> see anything repeating. <laughs> Actually, let me put the, let me go get that Twitch screen. I want to be able to, to, to read the, um, I'm so going to put I just, it on my first screen. I just uh, added my uh, email address, Kevin at Skylum.com, into the stream. So, Pixel Grabber, if you want to shoot me an email, I'll make sure you get uh, get a copy of Luminar AI. Cool. All right. So, Pixel Grabber, uh, you want to put your email in there again, Kevin? I uh, just did. Oh, you just did. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, it's 1.05 p.m. I didn't see it. All right. There it is. I see it now. All right. Let's go to another number and putting in another number now. Okay. So, this is going to be for. Um, Aurora, right? Yep. Yeah, Aurora HDR. Aurora HDR. Okay, so I got the number typed in. So everybody, start putting in your number now. All right, let me go find. Uh, where the hell did I put it? <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Jeez Louise, it's like a difficult day today. There we go. Found it. Okay, everybody's putting their okay. Why am I? Not, there we go. There it is. Okay, everybody's putting in a number. I see Dready Three and Mackinsense and IB Wizard, Willie Sakai is there. Diana Vidge. Okay, cool. Let's give you guys about twenty more seconds, and we will move on. Okay, we ready. All right, so the winner, I'm looking at these numbers again. It looks like it's going to be Faye Barsh, who is 13. So, Faye, <laughs> congratulations. All so, right. So, grab um, Kevin's email address and email him. And he will send you oh, your phone. Nice. All right. So, um, so the next, I guess, the next one we'll do. I tell you what, the next one we'll just do do is the uh, the we'll, we'll we'll keep the uh, the one year subscription to the Creative Cloud last. So we got we got one more, then we'll do the Creative Cloud subscription. So this next one is going to be for the five week uh, uh, Photoshop workshops. Uh, oh. so Third in January of twenty twenty one. So um, I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to. Um, I, I, I have a I have a question. Is that the beginner of workshop? That well, you it's going to be your in? choice. It's going to be oh, your. Oh, I see. Because I've got the beginning, the intermediate, and advanced already booked with dates. So, I see. Uh, so you get to pick your choice. If you if you feel you're beyond a beginning and you prefer to go into the intermediate class. It, beginning class starts in, in January 26th, somewhere into January, approximately. Um, I'll send you details and dates and all that stuff. Um, the intermediate class starts on March 9th. I think the advanced class is also starting the beginning of January, okay. uh, end of January. So um, just let me know what you're interested in and uh, we'll get you in those workshops. And they're designed for you guys to really take your skill, increase or improve your skill sets so that you're moving your work to the next level. So that's why they're five week classes. You're gonna be taught to understand the programs so that you guys can create like artists. All right, and we're gonna go beyond the technical so you can become much more artistic and fluent with your fluent and your, your, your vision um, in Photoshop. Okay, so I put a number already in um, the notepad so if you would, uh, everybody put in, put in their number in the chat box. And we'll sit back and uh, there we go. Numbers are coming through. <laughs> Mike, Mike PXX, he's <laughs> going strong. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Give you guys about 15 more seconds. Yeah, 340. I wonder if he's somebody's already wanted. What's this number for? It's from one to 100, silly. 
<laughs> it's for it's for winning stuff. It's for winning, it's winning it's stuff. Win this is for a five week Photoshop class of your choice. Okay, so there you go. Oh, nice. Oh. That's a bold right, pick, my you. friend. Boy, it's something to remind me of my students here. Not listening. <laughs> it's a bold pick. <laughs> I like it. All right, let's see who is the closest. What is the lowest number in here? It's probably 21, right? I said 22. Okay, so Benelli said 22? Where's yeah. that? I don't, know. I don't even see 22 in here. Okay, Diana Vision. She wins it. Diana oh. Vision. Excellent. Diana Vision. She's here in San Diego. Congratulations. Well, Mike. Mike, it could have gone either way, pal. Uh, okay, we got one <laughs> more. To go. We got one more. To go. I'm going to type in my email address. So, Diana, email me. On you know, I should have information. I think you've taken workshops from me before, but uh, um, but just email me. Here's my email address. Say you won the uh, the five week uh, Photoshop class, so we'll get you set up now. One more. Now this is for the biggie. This is for, um, this is for the one year subscription to the Creative Cloud. Okay, so so I'm gonna everybody start typing in a number now. So from one to one hundred. Yeah, Diana, you should already have the Creative Cloud because you want. Like late last year, right? Okay. We got a lot of numbers coming in through this one. They obviously they obviously want to create a car cloud way more than the five week workshops. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these numbers coming in. Drum roll. All right. Oh, I love this mic picks. 95, 55, 11, 1. You know, that disqualifies you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect he already has it. Yeah, I know. I think so, too. Now, guys, if you already have the Creative Cloud, what this does is it adds another year on top of your current one. So if, you're, if, you're, if your current one ends, say, March of next year, another year is added on top of that past your end date. Well, and, and it's the full Creative Cloud, right, Steve? Correct, Not correct. just it's, the photographer pack. Yes, Kevin, it's absolutely correct. It's everything they own: Illustrator, um, a Photoshop, Lightroom, Dimensions, um, After Effects, Premiere Pro, everything. Good. Oh, thank you, Faye. Faye says she absolutely loves the Photoshop. Okay, here we go. Um, so the person here who wins. It looks like it's going to be Mike PXX. What? Wait. Uh, <laughs> with which number? <laughs> oh, what? Well, he did the one at the top. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> at the very top, he was joking down here, but but he's Sweet. got the one at the top. Strategy right. worked. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I disqualified the second one. I just took his first one. He's yeah. so much. He never joke around like this because everybody will, like get on you. <laughs> what? He's too surprised. He can't even believe it. So, um, <laughs> all right. So, Mike, um, I am. Let's see. I put my email address in there earlier, so I'll put it in again. All right. So, Mike, putting in my email address again now so that you email me and let me know that you are the one um, that uh, won the, the Creative Cloud Suite. And then once I have your email address, um, I will send that to my Adobe contact and Adobe will contact you um, uh, and, and give you your one year, one year license. And uh, through Cat Eye says, what a fun group. Thank you, I appreciate it. It is a very fun group. <laughs> Make sure you guys go to our Facebook page. Let me actually give you the link. So the, the, the official Photoshop users group Facebook page, I'm gonna grab the link for you real fast here. And we go to Facebook here, Photoshop, there we go, Photoshop users group. And there it is. And let me give you the link now. So I'm, I'm gonna put it into the chat box. Post your work here. 
post your work, help each other out, um, and learn some new stuff from, from more the pro professional Photoshop artists. Um, we are about, we're all about, I think we're 34,000 members right now at that group. And there's some great stuff on there. So be involved. Um, I can't say enough. I mean, a huge, huge, huge thank you to Kevin, um, our, our presenters today, um, to um, to Kevin and Angela and and Vanelli. Thank you so very much. All the all the the Skylum team uh, promoting great stuff, guys. Thanks, hey, Stephen. Glad, glad to be here. It was fun. We, we got to have you back again. And then Angela, I'll I'll. I'll I'll call you after after the stream if you like, and and I think I, I talked to you about doing a presentation for your Verkumers group. Well, you're, aren't you our judge this month? I am, but I think when I was talking to you about doing another presentation. You texted me something, but I, then there was nothing. So you, uh, <laughs> it was one of those what? things where I got a message and then I replied, and I was it like, was oh, okay. <laughs> thank you, Diana. <laughs> And thank you for being involved here. So, guys, guys, make sure you follow me on Twitch. Because when you follow me, it's all free. When you follow me, every time we do this broadcast, you're notified that we're on. If you want access to all of the educational content on Twitch, four bucks a month. Just you know, subscribe, become a member, and then you have access to everything whenever you want, okay? Uh, and I do a lot of stuff on here beyond Photoshop, 3D, Photoshop, digital painting, compositing, all of that stuff. Um, I, I'm, my presentation is more geared toward the fine art of, 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 of digital. Um, let's see, a back with you know, Stephen says, Stephen, we should do another outing like the one we did in Belleville Park. You know what, it's because of this COVID, uh, we did do an outing. Actually, Angela and I, Angela yeah. is the president of the Dark Rumors group, was about a, a month ago we did it? Something like that. Yeah, that's actually somebody from our club. Yeah. Uh, oh, it is. Okay. We yeah. did. You should, you should have known about it. I think that's Andy. Is that Andy? Oh, I okay. Andy. Oh, I see. I, th I thought it was somebody from our group. Okay, for the Photoshop group. Okay, I, I forget it, Andy. I'm not paying attention. Um, yeah, um, we, we should do that. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> that, that, that's up to Angela. Uh, maybe we can do something like right before Christmas or something like that, a special Christmas outing. Yeah, we just have to, you know, see what the yeah what the, what's allowed said. at that moment. So. Yeah, what the governor says. So yeah, it's just, it's just bad timing because it seemed like things were getting better, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just we we let our guard down, and now we have this problem with this whole COVID thing. But what I was what I was going to propose to um, Angela was to do something online. Um, I think that might be a little more practical. It looks like like that. It looks like the, the the lockdown starts tomorrow for three weeks. Yeah. Um, new lockdown order starting today, so that's definite. Then, mm -hmm. um, yes, they definitely stay safe. Thank you very much. Online is great. Yeah, you know, out, online now is pretty much the way it's going to be probably through the mid mid next year. Yeah. Uh, they get the, the virus is out. I mean, the the, the vaccine is out. They're going to start vaccinating. I, I hear as as soon as next month, as, as December, or this month, I should say, this December and, and early next year. Let's we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, keep on clicking, folks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank the you. invite, Steve. Now, thank you for, for being a part of this. And thank you, the whole Skyland team. I'm really, this is grateful, very grateful for this. Everybody, um, if we don't chat soon, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And um, we, I will definitely see you guys. Um, actually, we have we usually, we usually have uh, broadcasts on Sunday too, but uh, we don't see you the rest of the month of December. I'll definitely back, be back on in January. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop streaming um, to Twitch, which means we'll still be live here on on. Uh, I'm going to end the broadcast of Twitch. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so very much for being here. Um, I'll be in contact and uh, have a wonderful holiday. Bye, folks. Okay. Bye.